It's time for exciting live and local sports action on Richmond's very own WBON-TV, the leader in local sports television. Watch live on your big screen with the WBON-TV Roku channel or by streaming the live player at WBONTV.com. And support these great local sponsors who support our community. Now, here... Good evening, everyone, and welcome in to Madison Central High School, where tonight your Madison Central Indians have made the trip over to Lexington to take on the Bryan Station Defenders, and we are here live on WBON-TV, as always, presented by Bishop's Small Engine Repair. I'm Michael Watkins, along with Tom Gross tonight, and Tom, it's the Indians, it's the, it's the Defenders, and it's no two teams no strangers to one another, obviously, but they also know how each other plays. The two coaches know each other very well. Uh, and last year played two really good games. The biggest one, though, happening in the postseason. And Madison Central won 41-18. to In the two games last year, the Indians outscoring the defenders 54-39. Of course, losing that game in the regular season, but seeking some revenge and got it here in late November. Yeah, it was a good game, and uh, not only was it, uh, you know, for the championship of the district, but it moved them on in the playoffs, and uh, I, didn't that bring them home for the next game? Yeah, regional they, championship against Dunbar, and they won that game, too. Yes, so uh, up to uh, Louisville after that, and you know what happened then, but they played a good game there as well. So hoping that tonight we get to see a little bit more, Michael, of the um, – pace of play that we saw in the GRC game, um, you know, keep the mistakes to little or none tonight and uh, see how the chips fall here at Bryant Station. We're here on the Whitaker Bank pregame show. Whitaker Bank is uniquely Kentucky in Madison County. Nobody has more locations than Whitaker Bank. Visit WhitakerBank.com to learn how they can better serve you. Glad you're joining us here on WBON-TV. Tom, we're everywhere tonight. We're live on WBON-TV Channel 9. So if you're watching us here on Facebook or YouTube and you're at home, you've got Spectrum uh, cable, or maybe you've got one of those uh, antennas to pick up your TV channel, you can turn us on 9.1 on the over-the-air channel or on Spectrum Cable Channel 712. We're also live tonight on our Facebook page, YouTube, our Roku channel, and also on WEKY 92.5 on the radio side. So no reason why if you cannot be here tonight, you can't tune in for what should be a dandy of a football game between the Madison Central Indians and the Bryan Station Defenders. Tom and I up here nice and warm at the moment inside the Gateway Cycles broadcast booth. Gateway Cycles located over in Mount Sterling. When it's time to choose your next ride, visit gatewaycycles.com. Tom, Madison Central, Bryan Station, two teams are coming into the city. And I think most folks thought that these two teams would be the top two teams in this district. GRC put a scare into everybody with the way they started the season. But in their last two weeks, they've had big-time losses to Bryan Station. They blow out in that one. And Madison Central last week in what should have been a blowout. You know, the Indians had that 21-0 lead in the first half. And I think after getting that lead, they kind of put the or took their foot off the gas and then started looking ahead to this week's matchup. That allowed the Cardinals to come back in that game and had a couple of chances to really come back in that game, maybe even win it, but they just could not get over the hump. Credit the Indians' defense last week for that victory, I think. Tonight, Central is going to have to put a full four quarters together if they want to pull out the victory. Uh, I think you're exactly right on that. You know, you talked about uh, after the good start of GRC this season. Well, what about the start of Bryan Station? Yeah. They lose the first three games, and I mean, they got shellacked by Frederick Douglass, and then they lost 36-12 to to Boyle County, and then they 21-20 to loss to Scott County, and then I don't know what happened. I don't know if uh, Coach gave them a magic pill. I don't know what the motivation was. But all of a sudden, after the uh, uh, third game, they, the, the least amount of points they've scored in their last five is 40 points. Yeah. So uh, they have a very high-powered offense. They've got a great passing game, a great rushing game. So it's going to be a tall test for the Indians well, tonight. A couple, a couple of things I think you can point out about their schedule. 
You know, you start the season with Douglas, Boyle County, and Scott County. That's three teams, two in the top ten in the entire state. Another one in Scott County, probably top six or seven in their class. So that's three very, very difficult games. In their last five, they're playing teams that they might or probably will see in the postseason. And that is why this Bryan Station team is very dangerous because in games against teams they're probably going to play in the first, second, or maybe third round, they're 5-0. and oh. Wins over Tates Creek, Lafayette, Henry Clay, GRC, and Oldham County. Tonight is the big one for both of these two teams. Madison Central, Bryan Station, the winner tonight will be crowned a regular season district champion. Our game tonight, folks, as always, presented by Bishop Small Engine Repair, but a special thank you to some uh, extra special sponsors for our game tonight. We know it's that time of year, Tom. Uh, election season right around the corner. I want to say thank you to these great sponsors as well. Re-elect Republican Steve Tussie for Madison County Jailer, a native of Madison County who has proven he is a man of integrity and commitment. That's paid for by Steve Tussie. Also on November 8th, vote to keep my coil as your Madison County Sheriff. That message also paid for by the candidate. And vote to re-elect Reagan Taylor as your Madison County Judge Executive to keep building a better Madison County. Paid for by the friends of Reagan Taylor for Judge Executive Myron Fisher, Treasurer. And tonight's game also brought to you by John Tudor, your Magistrate for District 3 in Madison County. Vote to re-elect John Tudor as your Magistrate on November the 8th. That's paid for by the candidate as well. So appreciate those great sponsors. We've got many more you'll see throughout the night. And, folks, if you're out and about throughout the week, stop by and tell these folks thank you for sponsoring the games on WBON-TV and allowing us to catch them if we can't make it out, especially for a game like tonight where it's on the road. Maybe some of those folks are at the family dog having a good time tonight. Of course, you know, EKU homecoming tonight uh, or tomorrow right around the corner here. We're less than uh, so 16, 17 hours from homecoming tomorrow. The homecoming parade took place earlier tonight, and now the family dog is the place to be for many of those folks back in town celebrating their EKU glory days, Tom, and uh, should be an exciting night to tomorrow for the Colonels as well. We're live here on WBON-TV. Appreciate you joining us. If you are watching on the Facebook page, let us know where you're watching from. We'll give you a shout-out tonight as we go throughout the evening. But it's going to be a fun night. Madison Central, Bryan Station, a regular season district crown. On the line tonight here in Lexington, we'll dive deeper into this matchup, look back at last year's two meetings, and so much more here on the Whitaker Bank pregame show. When we come back, we'll also give you the Jack Burford Chevrolet keys to the game for the Indians when we come back on WBON-TV. I'm Michelle. And I'm Jennifer, and in the spring of 1992, Bishop Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Estill County. Then, in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cupcadet, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shandawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estill Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see you. Fayette County Corrections is seeking to fill several positions now. The pay is great along with a long list of benefits and incentives, but the relationships created on the job are one thing that can't be taken for granted. It allowed me to kind of gather in that family feel, the feel of camaraderie along with my fellow officers, uh, and, and to get to know people as to see them uh, flourish in their career, and, and to be an opportunity to try to help them along the way to share my experiences. Apply today at LexingtonKY.gov slash corrections jobs. Whether you're in the market for a brand new Chevrolet, you're looking for a pre-owned quality vehicle, or your family car is in need of service by our GM certified technician, Jack Burford has what you need. Come to Jack Burford Chevrolet in Richmond for all of your automotive needs. Family owned and operated since 1964, Jack Burford Chevrolet is your hometown Chevrolet dealership. Check us out at jackburford.com or come in and see us today. We are located on the EKU bypass across the street from Walmart. Jake from State Farm, I would like to formally extend my gratitude for the Russell rate on my insurance. Do you mean surprisingly great rates from State Farm? I don't believe in accepting help, but I'll make an exception. Here's the deal, Russell. There's no special rate. These prices are for everyone. Consider a square. I made that from memory. I know your face that well. When you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Jerry Goble in Richmond today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.
The city of Richmond has seen improvements over the years, but I have seen firsthand that there is more to be done. The citizens of Richmond deserve a better quality of life, more economic opportunity, and a revitalized downtown area. If we want a prosperous city that is moving forward, we need to focus on improving our streets, sidewalks, and infrastructure. We need to work together to help Richmond become better. A vote for me is a vote for better. I'm Mindy Goble, and I'm asking for your vote. Proceeding paid for by candidate. So if I buy this today, I get free service for life? Uh, something like that. Congratulations. Thanks. What, what is this? Oh, it's uh, standard. It's in the contract. So I get all this for free? Yeah, something like that. I trust you too. You can keep the pen. <laughs> Everything OK? I'm just looking for the string. <laughs> the books are 100% free. No strings attached. All the books an undergraduate will need, all free. Madison Central, Brian Station coming your way here on WBON TV, part of the Whitaker Bank pregame show. Glad to have you along. Now time for the Jack Burford Chevrolet keys to the game. Get the keys to your next ride at Jack Burford Chevrolet on the Eastern Bypass in Richmond. Visit jackburford.com to see the entire inventory, all the new Chevrolets on the lot, SUVs, trucks, those new vehicles, all on the inventory online as well. Visit jackburford.com to see it all. And, Tom, keys tonight for Madison Central. Obviously, I think for the Indians, you know, and it's always this way, which team can win the turnover battle. But for the Indians, Tom, this year especially, when they've turned the ball over, they've been really bad turnovers. You know, it's 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 one thing to have a tipped pass that's intercepted or, you know, a ball that's, you know, that's stripped out. But there's been times this year where they've thrown a bad interception, had a bad one last week versus GRC that almost cost them six points. There's been times where they've you know, had a pitch out pass that was dropped or something like that. You cannot have those type of things in a game like this where it's a championship on the line, district uh, regular season crown, a chance to host a couple of playoff games in the postseason. You can't have things like that happen. So obviously taking care of the ball is a big thing. And I think a, a big start coming out. Uh, and, and getting off to a big start, whether it's, you know, a, a quick score, maybe a big stop on defense and a long drive where you get some points. But getting off to a good start is also going to be key in this game because Bryan Station, they can score and they can score quick. Last year in that playoff game, you know, we came out and hit them in the mouth quick. We hit them in the mouth twice early on in the ball game with two really quick touchdowns. I'm not saying we need to do that exact recipe to get a win tonight, but something like that where we get off to a good start, kind of get them back on their heels a bit would be key in this game. Yeah, I totally agree with you there. And another thing you can add along to that key is that uh, let's play that deliberate game you played last week against GRC. Run some time off yep. the clock. Uh, you don't got to be out there and be uh, razzle dazzle all night long. Let's let's be fundamental. You got uh, the best running back in the in the uh, district back in there tonight again, and it's going to be fun to see him run his second game back after injury. And uh, I think we're going to see a whole new uh, Hensley here this evening. Are you saying that you don't? You're, you're saying, and I want to get this. Make sure I got this right. Are you saying that no okie dokes tonight? Oh, there'll be some okie dokes, but not you don't want not, not too many of them. Or not, no, like, you don't plan them. You you don't run an okie doke play. Okay, okay, I got you. But got you. you know the players do the okie doke themselves yeah. sometimes when they can get around a defender or whatever. I so. think hopefully if nobody knew is uh, got us tuned in and really confused on what the okie doke is. Okey -doke? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you've been watching WBON TV for a while, you know the okie doke is my uh, my go-to on a nice little highlight play or something like that. But Anyways, back to the action here on the Whitaker Bank pregame show. Uh, it's a lot of fun here. Brian Station, Madison Central, these two teams, you know, basically kind of still new head coaches. You know, Philip Hawkins, the head coach at Brian Station, his third year. They're 25-7 and seven under him. Mike Holcomb, his second year at Madison Central. The team is 17-5 and five with him as their head coach. Just one loss this season. And the two coaches, Tom, have really changed the culture. They've really changed how these two teams play. And you can see it out there on the field. The players are more confident. Uh, there's just a different vibe around these two programs. And when they get together, especially what we saw last year, the games are normally pretty good. 
You know, we were talking to Coach before the game tonight, Coach Hawkins, and uh, he was telling us about some of his previous coaching experience, and he was at a school where uh, they paid him well, but uh, he just did not like uh, coaching there. Just there was no gelling between him and the players and so forth. So he came in and took this job over, and this is a totally different program than what it was before he took over as head coach. And from what he was saying, uh, we're going to be seeing some really good games from this team in years to come. Madison Central Bryan Station, kickoff around 14 and a half minutes away. Let's step aside for one more commercial break. Glad you're joining us here live in Lexington on WBON TV. Who makes the best meal in Richmond? Nuevo Vallarta. Friendly service, a place that's good for kids and good for groups. Head to Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Nuevo Vallarta is known for warm hospitality, great prices, great food, and the best fajitas in town. Start with an appetizer, order a la carte, or choose from their huge menu of Mexican favorites for grown-ups and kids. Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Since opening in 1972, Citizens Guarantee Bank has been there to help our customers enhance their lives and achieve their dreams. With seven locations across Central and Eastern Kentucky today, we are celebrating 50 years of being there for the communities we call home. Citizens Guarantee Bank is now CG Bank. New name. Same, same commitment to being there for our neighbors. CG Bank, we've been there for that. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Chenault Vineyards has become a premier destination in Richmond for family and friends looking for fun and entertainment. The vineyard sits on 500 acres with breathtaking views and several different things for you to enjoy while you're there. Live music, tastings, tours, a walking trail, or maybe you'd like to host your own event at the vineyard. Visit ChenultVineyards.com to check out the complete list of upcoming events. Like them on Facebook to stay informed or like Chenault Vineyards on Instagram. At Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry, we value our patient relationships, making it our priority to deliver the gentle, compassionate care that you deserve from a dentist. We offer patients single visit restoration on crowns, bridges, inlays, onlays, and veneers with Cirac. Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry is equipped to handle all your dental needs, from implants, teeth whitening, root canal therapy, and more. For your next dental appointment and for more details on lip filler and disport specials, call Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry at 859-985-0. 201. Looking for some fun this fall? The Galaxy Bowling Center has a league for you. No matter your skill level, you can come out, make some new friends, and have a great time. Call 624-4444 for details. Or if you're more of a trivia person, Champions Bar and Grill has you covered every Tuesday starting at 7 with great prizes and all-you-can-eat wings for only $19.99. Why go anywhere else? The Galaxy Bowling Center and Champions Bar and Grill. Your ticket to fun just off I-75, exit 87 in Richmond. It's the common thread that ties us together, making life better for everyone. At CVNB, that means better banking, better accounts and lending, better experiences, better schools and better communities. Better, it's what ties us together. CVNB, bank better. Welcome back into the Whitaker Bank pregame show on WBON TV. You can see the folks over there getting them some concession stands as they get ready for tonight's game. And right now, Tom, it's not too bad outside. You know, it's not uh, too chilly. It's it's actually been a, a pretty good fall day here in Central Kentucky. I uh, woke up, took my daughter to school this morning, and I uh, didn't have to bundle up. You know, two days ago, we had snow coming down. Oh, or whenever yeah. it was Tuesday yeah. or Wednesday, it was snowing early in the morning. And here we are today. You had to, you, know, you could put the, a polo on or a T-shirt and feel pretty comfy outside. I'm sure as we go throughout tonight, tonight that will drop down. But uh, as of right now, uh, current temperature 59 degrees here in Lexington. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it feels pretty good outside right now. Yeah, it's not too bad. There's a little bit of wind tonight, and I was looking. Uh, to see where the flagpoles were, but I don't see them, so they must be closer yeah, I think they're to on our, side of us. our blind side on one side or the other. But uh, there is a pretty good little wind blowing. It's probably like 6 to 10 mile an hour here this evening. 
but I don't think it'll have a whole lot of impact on this game tonight unless it should gust or pick up here a little later on this evening. So, yeah, perfect night for football. Uh, beautiful uh, turf uh, field here at Bryant Station. Really yeah. looking forward to seeing uh, this Defender football team this year. Yeah, Tom, 59 degrees outside right now. We talked about the, the weather here in Kentucky, how it can change pretty frequently. Uh, make sure to check our friends out at Madison HVAC. Give them a call today, 859-625-1471, or visit MadisonHVACR.com to learn more. Step aside for one more commercial break, folks. We'll come back in three minutes. Look ahead to this game tonight, Madison Central and Bryant Station. Coming your way here on WBON-TV. Need a physical for school or work? Need it right away? No problem! Berea Urgent Care has two convenient locations along with late hours to meet your needs. They're affordable too. Physicals at Berea Urgent Care only $20. DOT and CDL physicals are only $65. Berea Urgent Care number one by Walmart is open every day 9 to 9. Berea Urgent Care number two by Berea Drug open Monday through Friday 10 to 6. No appointment necessary. Berea Urgent Care, here when you need us. Dare tell you about the time I zipped right past that dang Sasquatch? I don't think so. Yes, sir, I don't know how they ever got away if it wasn't for this brand new side by side I got at Gateway Cycles. In Mount Sterling? Yes, sir, they set me up with something that left old Sasquatch sneezing in my dust. <laughs> Jimbo! Lord, I hear him coming back now. That ain't no Sasquatch. That's Mama. Get a great deal on Sasquatch eluders today. Gateway Cycles, Mount Sterling. To some, it's just a boat. But to Jim, it's his escape from meetings, traffic, and the grind of daily life. Anytime. He may not catch any keepers, but he wouldn't trade his day on the lake for anything in the world. That's why his boat is insured by Kentucky Farm Bureau. But it's not just Kentucky's Farm Bureau. It's Jim's Recharge the Battery Farm Bureau. My Farm Bureau. David Mayo, John Rader, and Chris Hornsby with Kentucky Farm Bureau. Batteries Unlimited in Richmond can energize you when your batteries fade out. They can also cut and make most home and automobile keys, replace and program key fobs, and make copies of your house keys. Plus, cell phone screen repair. Bring in your Apple or Samsung today. We are your home for all batteries. Go see Chris at Batteries Unlimited, Commercial Drive in Richmond. Hey, Madison County. Did you know Berea Ace Hardware is more than just a hardware store? Berea Ace Hardware carries the top brands like Skag, Echo, Steel, Spartan, Toro, Bintelli e-bikes, Wolf Brand scooters, Trailmaster go-karts, and Red Cat Racing RC cars. Check us out at BereaAce.com. We sell fun at Berea Ace. This is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Granite, marble, and quartz for any surface. Make a lifetime commitment you won't regret. Back here live on WVON TV and the Whitaker Bank pregame show. Whitaker Bank is uniquely Kentucky. Madison County, nobody has more locations than Whitaker Bank. Visit WhitakerBank.com to learn how they can better serve you. Also, a couple of special uh, sponsors for this game tonight. Re-elect Republican Steve Tussey for Madison County Jailer, a native of Madison County, who has proven he is a man of integrity and commitment that's paid for by Steve Tussey. Also on November 8th, vote to keep Mike Coyle as your Madison County Sheriff. Paid for by the candidate on that one as well. And vote to re-elect Reagan Taylor as your Madison County Judge Executive to keep building a better Madison County paid for by the friends of Reagan Taylor for Judge Executive. And that's paid for by uh, Myron Fisher Treasurer of that as well. And tonight's game also brought to you by John Tudor, your magistrate for District 3 in Madison County. Vote to re-elect John Tudor as your magistrate on November 8th, also paid for by the candidates. So, Tom, we appreciate those extra sponsors coming on for tonight. 
And uh, it's Madison Central, Bryan Station. You and I up here in the Gateway Cycles broadcast, both Gateway Cycles, located over in Mount Sterling. When it's time to choose your next ride, visit gatewaycycles.com. And what a ride these two teams have been on, especially this year. You know, it seemed like they're on a collision course right now to face off against one another once again in the postseason. Should be a fun game, though. These two teams, very familiar with each other. We talked about how the two head coaches have kind of changed uh, the culture around the programs, and you can really see it over the last couple of years uh, with Bryan Station, and especially this year with Madison Central, one loss, seven and one. But tonight, Bryan Station, I think if you ask people around here, uh, you know, some of the maybe the local media here in Lexington who follow you know, these, this district really close, they would think Bryan Station's probably the favorite, but I think even they think this game tonight, it's going to be coming down to the wire, maybe last possession type thing wins. In this season, in those scenarios, Madison Central has had a lot of success. They have, and uh, that's how the season started off. Uh, first few games, uh, you know, it was the heartbreak kids coming up with a victory, and uh, they were able to stretch it out. Um, for a while there, and then they ran into the buzzsaw down in yeah. down in Pikeville. But, uh, you know, they played real well last week, and that's what I try to judge my opinion of how they're doing. And, uh, you know, there was a couple of mistakes here and there, and they did a couple of things they shouldn't have done. But uh, overall, I felt like they had a really solid game, both offensively and defensively, last week. And I... Uh, you know, think that'll carry into tonight. So we could, you know, we could see a 28-21 a game tonight. We could see a 14-7 to game tonight. Or we could see a 52-48 to game yeah. tonight. A lot of points, I predict, going to be on the scoreboard tonight with these two teams. Captain's meeting right now taking place. Malachi Wood, Travis Grant, Hagen Harrison, and Brock Eads, the captains of the Madison Central Indians. They're going to be in the white uniforms, the blue pants, blue numbers, blue letters outlined in the red. Brian Station in the green with the yellow numbers, yellow letters outlined in the neon for the defenders. And you see the captains meeting there on your screen. These two teams ready to go, and it should be a fun game. Now time for the Jerry Goble State Farm Insurance Star Watch tonight. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there, just like Jaden West has been for the Madison Central Indians. You know, Tom West this year has been the main guy, you know, with Brady Hensley missing so much time with that injury, Hagen Harrison and Jaden West have really shown their connections. Of six of the 16 touchdown passes from Harrison this year, 12 of those have gone to Jaden West, and West on the season has 28 receptions, 466 yards in those 12 touchdowns. He's also returned two interceptions for touchdowns this year on defense. So Jaden West has been very big, and I think right now, you know, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how the District Player of the Year is awarded, but if it's only on district stats, then I think Jaden West right now has to be the front runner for the District Player of the Year, especially if the Indians pull out this victory tonight. He had two touchdown catches in the win over Oldham County along with the pick six, and he had a touchdown catch last week in the win over GRC. He's played very well, and I think we're going to have to have a big game from him tonight if the Indians want to win. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. So uh, let's see what happens here. We're just a minute and a half away from kickoff here in this one and uh, really looking forward to it. Before we get to the kickoff, we'll once again look at our injury report, courtesy of Orthopedic Sports and Physical Therapy. Get yourself back in the game with help from Orthopedic Sports and Physical Therapy. Visit OSPTKY.com to find out more about how Orthopedic Sports and Physical Therapy can help you get back in the game tonight. Rylan Rhodes, a big piece of both the offense and defensive line for Madison Central out of the game tonight for the Indians, but they do get back Max Murphy. They get back uh, a couple other offensive linemen and defensive linemen as well. So uh, I, I think Gillis is back. Yari Gillis is back for the Indians. So a couple of big guys returning from Madison Central. That's going to be big for them tonight as they look to pull off a win and get the regular season district crown over Bryan Station. Appreciate you joining us here, folks. Michael Watkins along with Tom Gross, our producer on the TV side, Gage Hill, our radio producer back in the studio in Richmond is Aiden Mills, and our cameraman tonight is Jericho Puckett and We've got uh, Jacob Beck on the camera as well. Dawson Royal will be down on the sideline providing us some updates 
from down on the Indian sideline across the way. Bryan Station will be on the near side. Madison Central across the other sideline. And we are ready to rock here in Lexington. The defenders won the toss. They elect to receive, so they'll get the ball first. And in this game last year on this field, Tom, it was back in mid-November. Bryan Station hosting Madison Central on November the 12th. The Indians came out, jumped out to a big lead and won 41 to 18. And Brady Hensley was huge that night, 167 rushing yards on 21 attempts. Harrison ran for 113 on only six rushing attempts. And round game going to have to have a big game again tonight if the Indians want to try to knock off the defenders once again on the road. Yeah, interesting call uh, by the team to uh, win the toss and take the football. So they're pretty confident in their ability to score points. So they'd like to get down and get an early score here at home and, uh, you know, put a little more pressure on Madison Central. Pat Moore has been so good on kickoffs this year. They need him to put one in the end zone here and not allow a return by Damon Green, who's back to return it. He will. Hollowed in from the two-yard line. And here come the defenders straight up the middle. Hit and taken down at the 25 of Bryan Station. That's where they'll begin their opening drive here in the regular season district championship game. Coming your way here on WBON-TV. And if you're listening on the radio side, WEKY. Brandon Peters with a nice defensive play there on the kick return. Came in and made a good stop to uh, pin Bryant Station back around normal starting area when you do get a touchback. Two guys that were big in this game last year defensively for the Indians, Jeffrey Kinley and Edgren Sweat. Both guys were seniors, played so well, really keyed in on a victory for the Indians in that re, uh, district championship game in the postseason. Here the defenders go to the ground, and Travis Grant along with, I believe, Malachi Wood trying to see the number. I think that's actually... That's number 70. That's the big man who's played so well, Tom, in there on the stop for Madison Central, Tavion Kirby. Yeah, Tavion, nice job filling the hole on that side. And uh, having a fullback to run in front as blocking didn't help a bit. The uh, uh, Indians able to fill all the holes and good penetration by that defense. How good has Kirby been this year? He has been a force up front. Second down, the defender is going to throw. All day to let it fly, and the pass incomplete, intended for green. Jaden West is there on the coverage, and just like that, a third down and 11 for the defenders as good defense for Madison Central, Tom. You know, I, most of the time, if I'm Brian Station, I got that much time to throw. You got to like it, but that time, Indians played good defense in the secondary and got the incompletion. Yeah, if there's been one thing this year is uh, the secondary um, – you know, on a play here and a play there, letting down a bit and getting behind the uh, the intended receivers. So, so far, so good here in the early going. Cut right. 0 for 1 thus far on that incompletion. Third and about 12 for the defenders. Three receivers set. A little quick out. Pass complete to Green. He'll get the first down. Ran out of bounds. And nicely done by Green. A quick out, Tom, that was only about six yards downfield, but he's able to stretch it out, showing off his speed and picking up the first down. You've got to get off the field on a play like that if you're the Madison Central defense. Yeah, that 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 was not a good play for the defense, and uh, a whole lot of running room over there. With just a quick hitter to the left side, and it was close enough to the hash mark that he was able to have some running room to use his speed, as you said. First and ten. Well, hand it off straight up the middle, running into a defender, running off of a defender, and a nice carry for Jeremiah Mundy Lloyd, who's got nine touchdowns on the season, averaging 74 yards per game, picks up about six there on first down, second and four, make it second and three after a gain of seven. He had a huge game in that GRC lopsided victory that they had a couple of weeks ago, and uh, uh, they interviewed him on TV, and he said they just, you know, coach gave him the ball, and he's just taking advantage of it, and uh, there's another opportunity right there that he was able to pick up some yardage. Indians get to him, and they have lost a yard. They're going to back him up, lost half a yard, so from second and three now to a third and four and maybe a, a long four, short five for Bryan Station. They picked up 
a third and 12 a moment ago pretty easily. See what they do here on third down and about five for the defenders. Cut right. Again, 65 of 121 this year, 11 touchdowns, just over 1,000 yards through the air. We'll go back to the ground. Monday Lloyd right into a defender, stood up and brought down. Great defense. Brock Eads in there on the stop along with Hayden Kaiser, who has been a man, a beast, at that linebacker position for the Indians defensively this year. And the defenders, Tom, going to punt. Yeah, Kaiser, great heads-up play that time. He uh, basically keyed on the... Uh, the uh, running back that gets most of the carries here for Bryan Station, and they were able to stop him. And we got offsides on Bryan Station. Yeah, false start. And might have been a good thing. That punt didn't go very far. Jaden West had a lot of running room on a return. And now Central changing up some personnel. They might try to go after this one now as the defenders backed up to the 37-yard line, the tail of the football on the 37 on the right hash mark, and they'll punt it away once again. West back to return. They do bring some pressure, almost got there. This one will take a Bryan Station bounce and a nice bounce inside the 20. It'll take a breather at the 19-yard line, and the Indians will take over on offense from their own 19, and we'll get our first look at Hagen Harrison for the Madison Central Indians tonight. Tom Harrison, at times this year, has looked like he has got this thing figured out, but also at times he's had some issues taking care of the football and had one of those moments last week in that uh, game against GRC. He's thrown four interceptions this year, but in the last three games had two against Pikeville and then one last week versus GRC. Yeah, and, and uh, it, I call it a lazy interception, not saying that he was lazy himself at all on that, but it's a situation where you're in a little bit of a bind, so you just go ahead and try to throw it at somebody, and that doesn't work real well sometimes. Jaden West makes the catch out in space and picks up about seven, maybe eight yards. See where they ran him out at. Looks like the 25-yard line, so a gain of six. Haskins pushing him out of bounds. They're going to mark it at the 26-yard line. So it's a gain of seven. Need the 20, uh, just past the 29. So second down and a long two, short three for the Indians. Two receivers right, one to the left. Hensley in the backfield to the right of Harrison. Brock Eads now splits off wide right. Harrison going to throw on first down. Maybe run with it. He's looking downfield. Throws it behind Brock Eads as a flag comes in. And an easy holding call for the officials here. And that's one thing about rolling out time. A lot of times when a quarterback gets out of the pocket, it does open up those holes to create a hold. And that time, that's exactly what happened. The defender tried to roll with Harrison out of the pocket. And the holding call there against the Indians will back it up. So from a second and three, back to the 16-yard line. So second down and 13 for Madison Central. Yeah, it's interesting how they're uh, lining this up, and it's interesting that they uh, went with passing thus far. Yeah. 9-12 to play, or 9-13 to play, just underway here in the first quarter. Madison Central. Out there on offense, second and long. Harrison going to throw again. Quick out. West makes the catch again. And two catches early for Jaden West. Gets this one up to the 24-yard line. So a pretty manageable third down and five for the Indians. Well, he's got uh, his 30th reception with that catch right there on the season. And uh, you can add the, what, 14 yards that yeah. he's caught in this game thus far onto his 466, and that gives him uh, 480 yards on the season in receptions. I like him getting West going early. Pitching out to Hensley. Pulling guard is Murphy, providing a block, and Hensley taken out at the knees. Good block by, or a good tackle by J.T. Haskins, Jr., but it will be a first down. They'll move the sticks. Needed five, got about five and a half past the 30-yard line and right at the 30-and-a-half yard marker for the Indians, and tell them that'll move the sticks. Yeah, Brady, 123.2 yards per game in the four games he's played. Last week he had an excellent game, and uh, that's 
Rush number 81 for him. He's only two behind the lead on the team now. Yeah. And he missed a lot of games. Only really played sparingly in that second game of the year against Dunbar. I think he just had 10 carries in that game. Here's Hensley again on the rush, trying to find a hole. Not much running room to the right side, able to gain maybe three. Let's see where they spotted. Looks like the 34-yard line. Yeah, the linebackers, Michael, on the left side there, they saw where the play was going, and they're, they're adjusting to whichever side that uh, Hensley lines up on. Uh, back there and so they're you know they're keying I believe more on the run than they are on the pass in this game thus far. And that explain why we've opened up with a lot of passing thus far in the opening drive. But run the option here. Oh fake pitch. Oh they do pitch it out. Hensley able to fall on it. That's one of those things we talked about and one of the keys to the game. You can't have mistakes like that. That time Harrison a little bit indecisive on what he wanted to do with it. And an injured Madison Central player on the ground, slow to get up. It looks like Travis Grant. I can't see the number. While they work on him, let's step aside for a quick commercial break. Injured player down. We'll check on that. And when we come back, we'll tell you who it is on WBON TV. Support local and get your vehicle running at its peak performance with CT Diesel Performance Soft Exit 97 in Richmond. Chris Thorne and his staff specialize in diesel performance and repair that will service any vehicle, big or small, with oil changes, brakes, tires, alignments, and more. Broke down and need a tow? Well, call CT Diesel at 859-699-8712. Like them on Facebook to enter a weekly drawing for a free oil change. CT Diesel Performance off exit 97 in Richmond. Being prepared for various types of disasters is one of the best ways to ensure the safety of your family, friends, and community. The Madison County Emergency Management Agency and the Chemical Stockpile Emergency Preparedness Program is here and ready to support community emergency response. For how to be prepared, make emergency kits, know your zone, and shelter in place information, contact EMA CSEP at 624-4787 or visit Visit madisoncountyky.us forward slash EMA. Madison County EMA CSEP, your partner in preparedness. Back here on WBON TV, you can see the injured player there is going to be Travis Grant, the stud. I kind of do it all, tight end on offense and you know linebacker slash defensive end on defense. And Dawson Roll over there on the sidelines uh, giving us a little update said that uh, whatever the injury is that the central players looks as if they were very shaken up themselves so uh, not a good sign there we're not going to speculate but we're hoping that we can get an update on maybe potentially what that injury might be but that's a big loss for Madison Central Tom Travis Grant you know on offense he's Mr. Reliable but on defense he's Mr. Do-It-All third down and short Harrison in the shotgun. Trips left, one receiver right. Parker Mullins now in there kind of filling in that tight end role. Trevor Dennis to the near side. Jaden West wide right. They'll turn the clock, and here we go. Harrison going to throw. Add West for a moment. Jaden comes back to him, but he's going to be pushed back. Gets loose, still on his feet. Indians fans wanting a late hit, but they won't get it, and that will bring up fourth down for Madison Central. So to the 36-yard line, West came back, opened it up for, for Harrison, but good job by Brown Station showing off their speed and athleticism, quickly getting to Jaden West on that far side. So it's a completion, third catch of the night for West. But now dropping back to punt for the Indians as their drive stalls is Pat Morin and Tom, both teams picking up a first down their opening drive, but on their second set of downs having to punt. Yeah, I see a lot of experimentation going on right now from both teams. So we'll see how things shake out here uh, on the next possession for each team. Morin a good punt. It, it almost hit a Brian Station player and then Green picked it up and tried to run with it at the 35 yard line. Didn't go anywhere, no return on the punt, and it'll be first and 10 for the defenders at their own 35-yard line. And that's exactly where they punted from last time. So no change in field position thus far, and let's see what this defense can do now. Indians without now Travis Grant. 
who not only is really good at pressuring the quarterback. We saw in that opening drought, he made a couple of nice defensive plays on Jeremiah Mundy Lloyd, the tailback for Brian Station, who's back behind the quarterback. Trenton cut right. It was in the pistol, and he'll hand it off to Mundy Lloyd. Trade up the gut and tackled immediately. Wow. No gain on the play. He might have lost a yard. <laughs> second down coming up for Brian Station, second and ten. The big guy was right there. He hit him, and he did not go anywhere. That time it was, it was not Monday, Lord. It was Bennett on the carry. He was ran the ball now 61 times on the season. Second down at 10. Madison Central with 6.43 to play out there on defense now, trying to get another stop. Cut right, rolling right, pressured. Going downfield and incomplete is cut right. He was looking for number one, Jaden Walker, who's caught seven balls this year and a pair of touchdowns. Pass too far out in front. It'll be third and ten. And as of right now, Tom, it seems like both offensive still trying to kind of feel each other out. Neither team trying to maybe make the early mistake. And right now the Indians forcing a third down and long against the defenders. I totally love watching Malachi Wood chase down a quarterback. Yeah. Uh, he, that young man has tons of speed. It's no wonder he'll be uh, playing at the University of Kentucky. Hensley now in there as a defensive end on the near side. As this third down play comes, cut right dropping back to throw. Good defense by Central. They get pressure, but cut right takes off running far side. And he's chased out about a yard short of the first down marker. Jaden West got to him right before he got to that first down line. It will be fourth down and one. And let's see what the defenders do. How aggressive are they going to be here with the ball at the 43-yard line? It looks as if they're going to go for it. Yeah, and they're bringing in a wide receiver uh, in the contest here. So let's see. They may they may have some kind of a short pass play here to uh, pick up the first down. Monday Lloyd also checking back in to the play. He was out on that third down and long. Now fourth down and short. And cut right's going up under center for the first time tonight. What's the quarterback sneak here? Indian sense it might be coming. He'll roll out and hand it off to Monday Lloyd, who gets a big gain, needed a yard. He got about seven, maybe eight, across midfield and into Madison Central territory, and the defenders move the sticks once again. Credit that left side tackle for Bryant Station. Nice job of opening up a minor hole, I would call it. Uh, but uh, you got a guy like Monday Lloyd that can run the football. He was able to get his body knife through there. And then with everybody up playing that one-yard defense, uh, he was able to get a good gain out of it. Cut right back to Monday Lloyd. Right side this time runs into a tackler, runs over a tackler, but is brought down that time on the stop, Parker Mullins. Don't make that Elijah Steele who... Missed the Oldham County game, was back in last week and serving as the backup quarterback tonight with Landon Ward out of the game with an injury. Second down in about three for Brian Station. Cut right up under center for the third straight play. He'll hand it off right side, Mundy Lloyd. Tries to hurt a wood offender and is tackled from behind. Hayden Kaiser and Steele in there on the stop. But a first down for Brian Station, their second first down of this drive, third of the game, and once again moving it further into Indians territory now at the 20, uh, the 34-yard line of the Indians. Yeah, he, he just walked right over top of his own player right there, was able to uh, jump and uh, gain the extra yardage for the first down. Now going to throw. Cut right. He's going deep. He's got a man. And the pass caught. Touchdown. Man. What a catch by J.T. Haskins, Jr. J.T. T.D. Check out the replay here as the defenders take a 6-0 lead. Cut right. Dropping back to throw. He's got a man. And a great catch by Haskins up over Bryant Mathis. And Brian Station makes it 6 0 PAT pending here with 4.39 to play in the opening quarter. Now, their kicker has missed a few. He's at 70% on the season on extra points. And a false start against Brian Station as the PAT goes through the uprights. That'll back it up some. Yeah. 
You know, you you had to think that they were in shotgun for their first five or six offensive plays. Then on that fourth and short, went up under center, cut right, stayed in that spot for three straight plays, and all three of those plays were runs. Yes. Eventually, they kind of caught the Indians sleeping. Bryant Mathis looking in the backfield, and the defender, the wide receiver, J.T. Haskins Jr., beats him downfield and scores the touchdown. Now the fall start will back it up. It'll be about a 22-yard extra point attempt now. Good yep. shot there of J.T. Haskins Jr., the wide receiver that made the catch on your screens right now. Yeah, that's Zachary Gentry doing the kicking. He's 23 for 29 this season. That one also through the uprights. So two for two on those attempts. First one didn't count. Second one will. It's 7-0 defenders, 439 to play in the first on WBON-TV. Hi there, I'm Alan Feldhouse Jr., head basketball coach at Madison Central High School. Here at MCHS, we have built a winning team. I'd like to tell you about another local winning team, family-owned and operated Bluegrass Restoration and Construction. They specialize in roofing, general construction, and home maintenance services. Just like on the court, you need a team that will work together to get the job done, and that's exactly what BRC does. Give them a call at 859-353-1133. Roll Tribe. Want to make dinner a true winner? This is Temptation times 12. Get the ultimate family meal at Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken with our 12-piece family meal at a great price. Try the new Cajun Combo for just $5.99 or feed a family with three new Inflation Busters meal deals. Defenders kicking it off after scoring the first punch of the game on a J.T. Haskins Jr. touchdown catch. Brock Eads will return it across the way for Madison Central. Finds a hole and a nice return across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And here come the Madison Central offense who Tom had a nice opening drive. A couple of nice uh, passes from Hagan Harrison to Jaden West. Got a first down. And then things stalled from there, and it's first and 10 on the 33-yard line. Ball on the left hash mark. No Travis Grant, uh, Dawson Rule, uh, trying to potentially get us an update on what an injury might be for the Madison Central tight end. Trips right, one receiver left for Harrison. Brady Hensley, two is left. Who takes, or they fake the handoff to him. Now Harrison, he was looking deep to West. Hagen throws in the past, almost intercepted on that far side. Damon Green, who's been everywhere defensively for Bryan Station, hopped up there and almost hauled that one in. Tom, the Indians wanted to go deep to West, but the protection broke down. Harrison had to roll out. The, it wasn't there. Eads was open for a moment, but that's the thing about Bryan Station. They're so athletic and they're so fast that any hole, if it's not, if you don't do it right then, it's going to close right. up pretty quickly with the speed that they have. Second down and 10. Let's see if they go to the ground here. Hensley's only had one carry thus far, I believe. Maybe two. They'll give it to him on the little counter play. Running near side. Hensley, a flag comes in. And that might be a hold. It is. Yeah at the 36-yard line. So a nice pickup by Hensley of six yards, negated by a penalty, second down and long. And that has been an issue with the Indians all year. Against GRC last week, they had several penalties that kind of prevented them from putting that game away. Well, the last time they had the football, they had a first yep. down, and then they got a holding penalty that took them back. Instead of uh, third and three, it was... Uh, what was a second down and 13, and they, they were unable to uh, get a first down. Harrison running over to the sideline to talk to Mike Copen on second down and 18. They need the 43-yard line to get a first down. Harrison running the play back in. Got to snap this one pretty quickly, I would assume. The Indians kind of coming out of the huddle slowly here. And you've got to be careful. They might have to call a timeout. They're going to have to, yeah. Holcomb calls the T.O. Down 7-0. Here, let's take a batteries unlimited timeout. 
here on WBON TV. Thank you for joining us here. And uh, let's uh, say thank you to some of our great sponsors for the game tonight. Re-elect Republican Steve Tussie for Madison County Jailer, a native of Madison County who has proven he is a man of integrity and commitment. That's paid for by Steve Tussie. On November 8th, vote to keep Mike Coyle as your Madison County Sheriff. That's also paid for by the candidate. And vote to re-elect Reagan Taylor as your Madison County Judge Executive to keep building a better Madison County. It's paid for by the friends of Reagan Taylor for Judge Executive Myron Fisher, Treasurer. And tonight's game also brought to you by John Tudor, your magistrate for District 3 in Madison County. Vote to re-elect John Tudor as your magistrate on November the 8th, paid for by the candidate. Tom, it's second down and 18. Indians kind of not really total communication there on the play call. And now a false start. And the execution just not there right now for Madison Century. I was down on the sideline talking to a couple of the assistant coaches. And even with this 7-1 and one record, Tom, and, and you and I have talked about this, They've really yet to put a full game together, like we saw them do in the postseason last year when they had that magical run of the semi-state game, had St. X on their, on their heels in that, uh, in that semi-state game. But they've really not been able to put a full game together, and that's, you know, some of that's injuries, some of that's been penalties, whatever the case may be. was hoping we might see that tonight, but early on it's just not been clicking tonight like we, we thought we might see for Madison Central. It's second down and 18, now second and 23 after that penalty. Pitch out to Hensley, and he's brought down immediately. Third down and about 26 for the Indians after another loss on that play. Ball at the 22-yard line. They need the 43. So it's third and 21 for Madison Central. One thing I've noticed, they have not used their big uh, big tackle on the left side yeah, there. Yeah, Malachi Wood. Yeah, Malachi's been in there. He's been making some good blocks, but um, they've only gone his way once or twice here. Uh, on the offensive end of things. I don't think you want to risk one here. Might see, see him keep it on the ground, try to bring in Pat Morin for a punt. They're going to throw Harrison. He's going to air it out to Jaden West, running behind the defense. And, man, that one was really close to being a hookup from Harrison to West. Jaden got behind his defender, but the pass just to hair out in front. There is a flag in the backfield at the 16-yard line. That might be a roughing the passer penalty. Wow, it's against Madison Central. <laughs> a personal foul against the Indians. Obviously, Brian Station will decline that, I would think. Yeah, it's declined. I don't think you want to risk. I mean, you, you might gain some extra yardage on a punt, but they were really close to hooking up on that pass and catch. So here we go. Morin coming back to punt it away inside his own 10-yard line. Green and J.T. Haskins, Jr. back to return. They await at their own 42. Morin gets it away. Nice punt. Takes a Madison Central bounce and will roll out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Make it the 42, and that's where Bryan Station will begin their drive. Tom with a 7-0 lead, not the start Madison Central fans would have hoped for. Still a long way to go in this one, but I think this drive defensively for Madison Central is going to be very important here. Yeah, 48-yard punt that time with no return. So, Morin's getting his job done. Uh, we just got to play some defense now and not allow them to get another score here. First and 10 for Bryan Station. Cut right will go back up into his shotgun. Handed off Monday Lloyd right side. He's hit, spins away from a defender, and brought down after a gain of five. First guy that got to him might have been a two-yard pickup. He spun away, broke a tackle, and gained three extra yards. Second down and five now for the defenders. Brian Station with those Oregon colors. You don't really see a lot of green and yellow in high school football, but 
out there on the field. You see the big defenders logo across midfield. There's a handoff, Monday Lloyd again. The Indians get there. Monday Lloyd's second effort, though, might have got him a first down. It's going to be really close. Depends on where they mark it. The far line judge is uh, short of the first down stick, and I think that's where they're going to mark it. So it's going to be a little less than a foot, or they may go ahead and just wave it a first down. No signal yet. Nope, still third down. So third and... A foot. Less than a yard, yeah. yeah. It's going to be cl close. The J.T. Haskins Jr., the wide receiver, he's signaling first down. Bryan Station might have asked for a measurement there, and they might have got a first down. That's one is so close. Yeah. It would be worth a measurement if I was uh, coaching staff. It's closer than a hair on Jamie Boggs' head. That's how close it is. <laughs> Third down. Cut right up under center. That's close. Quarterback sneak. He's got a first down. Falls forward. He'll actually gain about two yards to the 46-yard line. And then Bryan Station will move the sticks once again. Minute 47 to play, 7 to nothing. your score here on WBON-TV. Michael Watkins and Tom Gross here with you. And he is trying to get some momentum. Tom, really, I mean, with, with the Grant injury, it seems like that's kind of where things have, have kind of changed right now. Seemed like they kind of took the air out of the team. Here's Cut right going to throw a quick out to Green, who gets around Jaden West on that far side. Still on his feet, and he'll have a first down. And now Jaden West, oh, he was down. He gets up. Kind of worried me there for a second. He was still down on the ground. Might have been just mad at himself for missing the tackle on that far side. Another first down, yeah. and uh, you, you see why they've scored 40-plus points in the last five games. They can move the football and move it quickly. Indians need something to kind of give them some juice here on a first and 10 against Bryan Station. Three receivers set, two to the right, one to the left for cut right. He'll throw it out in the flat again to J.T. Haskins, who breaks a tackle. And Brock Eads just kind of dove after him. And missed the tackle there. Haskins gains about four, maybe five, to the 27-yard line. And Brian Station time. They've got a, a tailback to the right of the quarterback. Another one lined up behind him, kind of a modified pistol. As cut right, again, hands off. This time, Monday Lloyd straight up the middle. And he's trying to back his way into a first down. The Indians say they have the football. Parker Mullins is signaling Madison Central has it. I didn't see the ball come out. And the Bryan Station defenders hop up, and they've still got it. So third and about a yard. Ball on the right hash mark as the first quarter comes to an end. We'll flip sides. Brian Station threatening to add to a 7-0 lead. We'll step aside for a 30-second commercial break, and we'll come right back here live on WBON-TV. For four years, we've been into office here, and we have really changed Richmond from not to date. Commissioner McDaniel helped us get a facility up here. It's the old Senior Citizen Center, and it's uh, turned into a Class A facility. For four years, we've operated under budget. We've uh, increased our employee pay 20%. Ed's always been there uh, in support of uh, youth softball and girls softball. This is Ed McDaniel, and I'm asking for your vote on November the 8th. Proceeding paid for by candidate. Madison Central. Down 7 nothing as the second quarter about to begin, and the defenders, Tom, marching it down the field. Already with a touchdown lead in this game. And Madison Central, Tom, just, again, I, I don't know the severity of the Travis Grant injury. Dawson Rose still checking on that. They're still working on Grant on the sidelines over there. But ever since then, it just seems like kind of the life taken out of the Indians team. Yeah, yeah. Uh but they really need to be uh, next man up yeah. uh, mentality right now because, uh, uh, you know, if they allow a score here and another one before halftime, they could be out of this football game pretty early. Yeah, uh, Grant over there on the sideline has got his leg propped up on the bench with some ice on it and a blanket around him. So, uh, again, we're not speculating here. It may be something that he can come back from, but uh, – 
ever since then, that one play with that injury, I mean, obviously Grant's such a good player. It hasn't been the same out there on the field. Third and short cut right again, deep up under center. He'll hand it off Monday Lord on the first man through, finds a big hole up the middle, and he's got a first down, maybe a first and goal at the nine-yard line. And the defenders once again move the sticks. Yeah, and he's, uh, Monday Lloyd's being patient. Uh, that time he got the handoff and then he waited just a second and then he took off and uh, looks like we're going to have a timeout on the field. Yeah, Madison Central wanting to talk it over. Down 7 nothing, 11.53 to play. Appreciate you joining us here on WBON-TV. And, uh, Tom, it's it's not been a good start. We needed, or, you know, we said in one of our, in two, our two keys to the game. You can't have sloppy play. We've seen already a couple of mistakes there in that category on defense and offense. And we said that you've got to get off to a good start. Neither of those things have happened. Still, again, it's really early in this ball game, but Madison Central has got to fix those things. And I think that's why Coach Blair and Coach Holcomb want that time out there to try to correct what's going on on this side of the ball right now. Yeah, and uh, again, uh, we're used to seeing the linebackers fill the holes. We're used to seeing the secondary come up and help on the run situation, but uh, not seeing a whole lot of help on the run right now. They did the first couple of plays when they were out there on defense to start the game, but uh, big hole that last time and uh, plenty of running room. First down and goal. Going to throw a little slant pass and JT Haskins Jr. in for six again. Caught the defender slipping. And J.T. Haskins, just a quick slant right across his numbers. Brown Station, 13-0 lead, 11.49 to play. Check out the replay. Cut right, just drops back. A quick slant and a quick score for Brown Station. Touchdown, and it's a two-score advantage now for the defenders. And Madison Central in desperate need of some momentum. Extra point on the way. Extra point is good. 14-0 Bryan Station. We'll step aside for one minute and come back here to Lexington. Can Madison Central answer? We'll find out on WBON-TV. I'm Michelle. And I'm Jennifer. And in the spring of 1992, Bishop Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Estill County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cupcake, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shandawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop's Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 Northwest Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see you. Fayette County Corrections is seeking to fill several positions now. The pay is great along with a long list of benefits and incentives, but the relationships created on the job are one thing that can't be taken for granted. It allowed me to kind of gather in that family feel the feel of camaraderie along with my fellow officers uh, and, and to get to know people and see them uh, flourish in their career and, and to be an opportunity to try to help them along the way to share my experiences. Apply today at LexingtonKY.gov slash corrections jobs. Brown Station kicking off. Brock E dropping back to his own eight yard line to return it. Eads running far side, dancing around, trying to find a hole, still on his feet. And a nice return once again for Brock across the 25, near the 30. Yeah, not a bad starting spot, but uh, now the offense needs to get something going here without uh, shooting themselves in the foot. Two penalties last time they had the ball. A penalty the time before that, so let's see if they can come out and be clean with one possession and march it down and get some points on the board. First down and 10. Jaden West to the near side on that far side. Trevor Dennis for Madison Central. Let's see if the offense can get something going here. The handoff to Hensley, and that won't help. He'll be bottled up, able to keep those legs turning and gain a yard. Yeah, obviously, Brian Station knows how good of a talent Brady Hensley he is. Last year and that uh, playoff game, over 160 yards for the Madison Central running back. Let's see if they go back to the ground game. They had success in that opening drive, Tom, those quick outs to West, just getting him out in space and throwing it to him. Second down. 
And a handoff to Hensley and Brady again. He's brought down after a nice game, got about three yards, but not able to break those tackles that we've seen him break so many times. Third and five now for Madison Central and a big third down here for the Indians. Well, I'm sure the coaching staff had Monday Lloyd uh, working, you know, with the uh, starting defense and had him as Hensley. So they had a really good back to take Hensley's place. Yeah, they pitch it out to Brady again and quickly bottled up. Had nowhere to go. Great job of pursuing and tackling by Brian Station and the Indians forced to punt it away. Fourth down and seven as Hensley tackled for a two yard loss and Pat Morin punting for the third time tonight. Thus far, an average of 33 and a half yards per punt. Had that 36 yarder the last time he punted it away back to Brian Station. The two return men, Haskins Jr. and Green, back at their own 30. This ball going to be returned by Haskins, who's got the two touchdown catches tonight. And he might have another one here on a return. Near side, Green is leading the way. Haskins Jr. will take it all the way. Touchdown, Brian Station. Have yourself a game, young man. Third time tonight that JT has scored a TD for Brian Station. But there is a flag back at the 46-yard line, Tom. That might be a saving grace for Madison Central. Flag at the 46. And they're going to now say the 40. Three, and it is against Brian Station. That will pull back the score, and that is a big momentum shift. If you're a Madison Central fan, but the Indians got to get something going now. That might give them some life to kind of get out there and push them to a stop here on this defensive stance. Well, it takes six points off the board, and it's a uh, illegal block in the back on the, uh, on the uh, team. So let's see what they do here. Our guy, Velmar Miller, got us tuned in tonight, says thank you for helping support during the Madison High Night celebration. Appreciate you, Velmar, former Madison Central coach as well. 9.31 to play. Brian Station and Madison Central. These two teams have played a lot since 1998. Indians have won seven of those meetings. Brian Station, eight wins, so eight and seven. Eight wins for the defenders, seven for the Indians in those 15 meetings since 1998. A big one tonight, a regular season district crown on the line. Of course, regular season crown was on the line last year when the two teams met in the regular season. Brian Station won that one, but the Indians won the big one in November. Monday Lloyd again, a nice carry. Might have got a first down. Looks like he moved the sticks. On first down, he gains 10 yards, and he will move them again. Well, he's a good-looking running back, and Apparently was not uh, a starting running back at the beginning of the year uh, and uh, came in and, and started getting some work and so forth. And then along about game number four, uh, they got their scheme set up to where they use him quite a bit. Cut right, going deep. And that pass is almost picked up. That's really good defense by Bryant Mathis here on the near side. Getting in there and breaking that pass up, looking at number 18. It's Javari Burnett. Boy, he's a uh, Cartwright able to, cut right rather, able to throw that ball quite a distance. Both these quarterbacks have pretty good arms, that's for sure. Third or second down and 10. Hand off Monday Lloyd, left side he goes. Nice tackling there by the Indians. Hayden Kaiser, along with Parker Mullins, there in on the stop. David Rye asking on the Facebook stream, if Central were to lose tonight, where would that put them? Well, as of right now, the Indians would still receive a home game in the first round of the postseason. Uh, the other side of the uh, bracket would be Tate's Creek, Henry Clay, Lafayette, or Dunbar, and I believe it would be Lafayette or uh, Tate's Creek that would come into Richmond in the first round of the postseason. Cut right again, looking to throw. 
The defender wow. taken down. Cut right, going to chuck one down the field. Got a man and a very good defensive play. Man at the right time, jumping up to make that deflection. Is that Parker Mullins? I can't see that number. Can't. That's Elijah Steele, number eight. Yes. Great job on the coverage by Steele, and that is exactly what Madison Central needed, Tom. It looks like Brian Station was going to run away with this one on a punt return score by Haskins Jr. Instead, it ends up being a penalty against Brian Station. Indians allow one first down, but then now force a punt as Jaden West drops back to return it. Man, that one shanked off Holy the foot of the cow. punter. Takes a miracle Brian Station bounce somehow and will roll inside the 20-yard line. Man. It's amazing. Defenders catch a break there as that one right off the foot of the punter. It looked like it was going to be about a 20-yard punt. Ends up being about a 40-yard punt when it's yep. all said and done. So, yeah, Tates Creek, Henry Clay, Lafayette, and Dunbar on the other side. Dunbar and uh, Henry Clay playing tonight. Looks like Lafayette would be the four seed and Tates Creek would be the three seed. Tates Creek and Henry Clay playing tonight. So it would either be Tates Creek or Henry Clay coming to Richmond in the first round of the playoffs. Indians put it on the ground here on a carry. I believe that was Brock Eads. Gains about two, three, maybe uh, three yards on the carry. So yeah, David Wright would either be uh, Tate's Creek or Henry Clay if the Indians are not the number one seed. Still a long way to go in this game, seven and a half to play. Thomas' score here would be big because Madison Central will receive the second half kickoff. Yes. Get some kind of points here. Even if it's a field goal, give yourself a little bit of something to build toward in that second half. Second down and eight. Ball on the 22-yard line. We near seven minutes of play in the first half. Hand off Hensley right side. And Brady, man, they are so quick to the ball are the defenders. He's about three yards short of the first down. He get it across the 25 to the 27-yard line, needing to get to the 31 for a first down. So third and four for Madison Central. Yeah, big play here. Now they really need to convert this. He got 6.50 to go here in the first half, and they need a good sustained drive right now and come down and get some points on the board. So if we go back to Jaden West, they're looking at him. Harrison's going to him. Double coverage, and the ball deflected out of bounds. So incomplete, and the defenders, J.T. Haskins, Jr., man, he has put a stamp on this one. Both sides of the ball, Mr. Haskins, Jr., has been a animal tonight for Brian Station. He's got three scores, one of them wiped off because of a penalty. And he'll drop back now to return the punt for Brian Station. And if I'm Pat Moore and I try to keep it away from that young man with the kind of game he's had tonight. Yeah, he's already proven what he can do. You don't have to give him another opportunity here. Morin gets it away. Nice punt by Pat. Man, he skies this one. Back inside the 15-yard line, rolling around. Green will pick it up, trying to break loose. Bottled up, now going the other way, and he is tackled inside the 10-yard line. Man, Pat Morin put a boom on that one. Folks, check this punt out. Green Jr., back to return. It goes way over his head. Kind of a mistake by Green, I think, to even pick this one up. Kind of a dangerous play. But good job by Madison Central. Kind of putting a little uh, shield around him and not letting him break loose. And they're going to spot this ball inside the 10-yard line. About a 60-yard punt there, Red. That was crazy. And no return minus yardage on the return. Not sure if he wants to, but I, I think he will. If he wants to, Pat Morin will for sure be playing eventually on Saturdays. That's how good of a player he is. He showed it there. He's a good kicker as well. Hasn't really had many chances to do that this season. First and 10, Brian Station backed up inside their own 10. Hand off Monday Lloyd. Up the gut he goes, and he gains four. Yeah, he waited and waited and waited, and nothing really big opened, so he went ahead and pushed his way forward and with a nice gain there, three yards on the play. Yeah, I thought it was four. It was at the 9 to the 12, so it's a three-yard pickup. 
We dip under six minutes to play in this first half. Madison Central get a stop here. Might be good to kind of flip field position, but you got to do something with it if you get the ball back. First, complete the stop. Here's Monday Lloyd. Man, a big hole on that near side, and he's got a first down. And Bryan Station offensively, Tom, they're opening up holes that Madison Central opened up last year for Brady Hensley and the old water spider he used to call him. Can't think of his name off the top of my head. But the other running back they had last year. Yeah, he graduated, didn't he? Yeah. The water spider, you remembered that. First down and 10. <laughs> I like that. Man in motion as they give it off to Monday Lloyd. Right side it goes. Another big hole spins away from a tackler. Man, Central claiming they have the football. It's the second time tonight Madison Central has said they've got it. No signal from the officials yet. There won't be one because Bryan Station will keep it. Second down in the yard. Well, I think what, what's happening is Monday Lloyd, as soon as he hits the ground, he's just letting the ball go. You know, as he's starting to get up and, and uh, Central, Johnny on the spot, diving on it. Adrian Parks, that was the young man yeah. I was trying to think of Water last year. Spider. Yeah. Second down and one. Cut right back up under center. Watch for a deep shot here. He might try to get one. He lost a football and has to dive on it. He was heading in the direction of Monday Lloyd, but some tells me they were looking for a deep shot there. Third down and about four after the fumble. Bryan Station able to recover it. Ball got kicked, so the official has to respot it. <laughs> Move back. Yeah. But it right across the 29-yard line. They need the 32 for a first down. So it's third and three. Coach Hawkins, the head coach of Bryan Station. Had a great chat with him before the game, talking about his guys and they're, they're, they're loaded again next year, Tom. We got a lot of guys coming back. Hand off, Monday Lloyd. He's stuffed. It'll be fourth and a yard. And if I'm Brian stationed here, you might be able to pick it up, but with the way their defense has played tonight, oh, wow, they're going to give him a first down. Wow, I did not think he got that, but the officials. That's where they spotted the ball. Give the first down to Brian Station. Wow, that's a big spot there. Madison Central, I thought they got the stop. Brian Station moves the sticks once again. Now 328 in the first half remaining. Cut right back to the modified pistol. Chopping back to throw. Quick out, and man, how about that pass? Right into the hands of awaiting JT Haskins Jr. And talk about being on par with your wide receiver. Cut right, let that ball go before his wide receiver even turned around, yep. Tom. Yep. And when he did, right there the ball was waiting on him. First down, Bryan Station. So all that time you spend coming out early or staying late after practice to work on things like that, pay off in a game just like it did right there. It's like you and I when the check comes at the restaurant. Always funny how I turn around and you're gone. Exactly. First and ten. You got to know when to fold them. Quick out to green. <laughs> Man, showing off his speed, he's gone. Yep. Flag comes in behind the play. Yep. Central might catch a break again here. Green just hit the Jets and took off upfield. The touchdown signal there, but let's see what the flag is. Yeah, check this out, folks. Whoop, and then gone. Man, Central had no chance to catch him once no. he got around that first defender. Let's they, see what the flag is. Brown Station coming back as if they know it's on them. Yeah, so that's uh, 12 points they've had yeah. taken off the board. It's a hold against Madison Central, or against Brown Station, excuse me. So that will, I think it will also t negate the first down because yes. this will be coming back. The flag came in at the 41-yard line, so it should be up at the 48 is where they'll spot it for Brown Station. And it will be first and 10. So first down and 10, they'll just remark it. And now the sideline officials, the near side and the far side guys coming in to talk to the 
line judge. I think it would be first down to like eight. That they would back the sticks up from where they were on that last first down play. Yeah, they. I think the chain gang got a little happy. And that's what they're going to do. So yeah. it was it was first and ten on the touchdown. Yeah, so it's going to be first down and eight. So where the penalty occurred, you just mark it off from there. It's first down and eight. Cut right with one tailback to his left. He's rolling out, looking upfield, got a man, and threw it too high for one guy. And then the receiver behind him hauled it in. Who else would it be other than J.T. Haskins, Jr., who makes another catch? Man, this man has been everywhere tonight. Yeah, I think that uh, that ball got tipped, as you said, and uh, he was able to track it once it, you know, like a bingo on defense, he was able to track it and haul it in for a nice gain. Now the defenders threatening to add to their total before the half comes to an end. Central needs a big stop here. Needs to buckle down and try to get a stop. Jaden West comes over to match up with Haskins Jr. And if I'm Jaden West, I'm saying I'll take him the rest of the night. Someone's got to stop that man. First and ten. Going to hand off Monday Lloyd. He's hitting the backfield. Hayden Kaiser there to bring him down after a minimal pickup. Gain of about a yard and a half. Second down and long. Textbook linebacker play right there. You find your way into the backfield. You do not try to wrap your hands around his waist. You go for those legs. And he did and was able to bring him down. Hold him to a one-yard gain. Second down and eight. Two receivers right, one receiver left for cut right. 14-0 lead, 2-23 to play in the first half. He'll hand it off Monday Lloyd again, spinning off a tackle. Monday Lloyd still keeping his feet going. Central trying to rip the ball out instead of making the tackle and a near first down for Monday Lloyd. He might have it. And down on the field, is that Malachi Wood or is that Kirby? I think that's Kirby, yes, yeah, number yeah. 70. He's going back to the huddle. He's all right. Maybe mad at himself for not making the tackle. Two minutes to play in the first half. Moving the sticks once again, Monday Lloyd. First down and 10 for Bryan Station. Cut right, taking his time. Takes the snap. Hand off, left side, Monday Lloyd again. There was a hold there. The official didn't call it. Not much no. running room for Monday Lloyd. As his helmet comes off, so we'll have to sit out of play. And he's able to gain six. Brian Station, Tom, a, a well-rounded football team. We've seen Monday Lloyd carry the load thus far. That when they needed to go downfield, Cut right has found J.T. Haskins, Jr., all night long. Second down and five. They're going to throw. Looking across the middle. And a touchdown, Bryan Station. No way. Madison Central can't believe it. That one was deflected by three different players. Let's check it out here on the replay. We got a good shot of it right here across the middle. West almost had it. And that looks like a touchdown. Brian Station celebrating the touchdown. Will it stand? They're saying incomplete. That one looked really close. Show it again, Gage. Let's check out the replay once again here on the TV stream, folks. Right across the middle, cut right. One defender hit it. Second defender hit it. And the receiver... Ah, that one's really close, but I believe the ground might have helped him secure it there. Yeah, that's what they called. So third down. Cut right, trying to hand it off. Monday Lloyd missed the handoff. Parker Mullins missed the tackle, and that might be a first down. A, a busted play might have got it across the marker it needed. For Brian Station, there's a whistle here on the sideline, and I think Brian Station calling a timeout. Yeah, it's going to be short. Fourth and short with under a minute to play for Brian Station. And cut right 
has already had one fourth down conversion on a quarterback sneak. The defenders want to talk it over. Let's say thank you once again to our special sponsors for the game tonight. Folks, re-elect Republican Steve Tussey from Madison County Jailer, a native of Madison County, who has proven he is a man of integrity and commitment. That's paid for by Steve Tussey. Also on November 8th, vote to keep Mike Coyle, your Madison County Sheriff, paid for by the candidate. And vote to re-elect Reagan Taylor as your Madison County Judge Executive to keep building a better Madison County, paid for by the friends of Reagan Taylor for Judge Executive Myron Fisher, Treasurer. And tonight's game also sponsored by John Tudor, your magistrate for District 3 in Madison County. Vote to re-elect John Tudor as your magistrate on November 8th, paid for by the candidate. So the officials radioing up here to add time to the clock. So it says 53.3 right now, now one minute remaining in this first half. And Madison Central in desperate need of a stop here, Tom, because if Brian Station, with the way they've played on both sides of the ball all night, we'll check out the first half stats provided by WL here in a moment. But it's not been pretty, and the numbers are going to show that because the Indians have been unable to get anything going offensively, and Brian Station just had big play after big play. Now it's fourth and about inches. Indians need to stop. Power formation shown with cut right up under center. Mundy Lloyd, the deep setback. Cut right, taking his time. He'll give it to Mundy Lloyd. He runs into a tackler, but forward progress and second uh, effort might have given him a first down. Yeah, he, he leaned forward, and when he leaned forward, he's a big enough kid that he was able to lean past that uh, Marker for the first down. Let's see what they're going to call here. They may go ahead and measure it, though. Hey, they're going to have close. to, I think. Central saying it's our ball. Brian Station signaling first down. The official signaling signaling for a measurement here. Now they're moving the sticks. No, they're bringing them out. There we go. I thought they were moving. Wait, what are you <laughs> well, doing? they are moving them. They're just moving them in the direction of us because they want to measure here. Going to be close. First down. Wow. Couple inches. 53.1 to play. So now Central really got to buckle down here. Brown Station has found ways to score all night long. And now Jaden West again matched up with Haskins Jr. here on the near side. That's the, the matchup to watch because that young man has been the go-to guy tonight. He scored both touchdowns for Brown Station. Cut right up under center. Monday Lloyd again, the deep setback. Two fullbacks in left side. He'll run that way. And again, a hold right there in front of the official. No, oh, there is a flag. Flag came in. The hold was right there in yeah. front of the official. And it came in. I didn't see it fall, but it is there. Check out the replay again. Number 54 held. That's Aiden Howard. He was trying to get to Monday Lloyd, but a clear hold in front of the ball carrier. And for the third time tonight, Brian Station has had points called back because of a penalty. Madison Central catching another break there, Tom. Yeah, and with the yardage, that helps a bunch because they were uh, close enough. I, it looks like it's going to be more than a – now maybe it is a hold. It's a hold yeah, from it's the a spot hold. of the foul. Yeah, yeah. From the, so from the about the 12-yard line, the hold actually occurred behind the line of scrimmage. Spotted at the 22-yard line. 39.4 to play. Cut right. We'll go back up under center. Throw it out in the flat. Breaking a tackle is green. And then he's finally wrapped up. Good job on the coverage. That's the man Hayden Kaiser again on the stop. Kaiser's been a beast tonight. And now Brian Station wanting to talk it over. Timeout. Defenders will take it with them and come back in one minute here live on WBON-TV. Whether you're in the market for a brand new Chevrolet, you're looking for a pre-owned quality vehicle, or your family car is in need of service by our GM certified technician, Jack Burford has what you need. Come to Jack Burford Chevrolet in Richmond for all of your automotive needs. Family owned and operated since 1964, Jack Burford Chevrolet is your hometown Chevrolet dealership. Check us out at jackburford.com or come in and see us today. We are located on the EKU bypass across the street from Walmart. 
Jake from State Farm. I would like to formally extend my gratitude for the Russell rate on my insurance. Do you mean surprisingly great rates from State Farm? I don't believe in accepting help, but I'll make an exception. Here's the deal, Russell. There's no special rate. These prices are for everyone. Consider a square. I made that from memory. I know your face that well. When you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Jerry Goble in Richmond today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Man, how about that session stand, Tom? We were thinking about getting dinner over there tonight. No hot dogs, no hamburgers, and no cheese pizza. It's all gone. Sold out. A lot of people here tonight. 32 seconds left in the first half. Madison Central trying to get a stop. Brian Station threatening to score once again. Cut right back up under center. He'll fake the handoff, and he is tackled for a loss once again. It is that bad man, Hayden Kaiser, getting back in there for the sack. Great job. Heiser comes through, Tom. Check out the replay on the Bluegrass Restoration and Construction replay. Kaiser untouched as he comes through to get the sack and another timeout. Let's step aside for a 30-second commercial break. Thank you for joining us here on WBON-TV. For four years we've been into office here and we have really changed Richmond from not to date. Commissioner McDaniel helped us get a facility up here. It's the old Senior Citizen Center and it's uh, turned into a Class A facility. For four years we've operated under budget. We've uh, increased our employee pay 20%. Ed's always been there uh, in support of uh, youth softball and girls softball. This is Ed McDaniel, and I'm asking for your vote on November the 8th. Proceeding paid for by candidate. Third down and looks like 19 yards to go. Ball at the 25-yard line. Now, they need the three, so it's, yeah, third and 22. And Tom, the Indians, a couple of big stops here by Hayden Kaiser. Made the tackle on the... Quick strike to Green, and then the quarterback sack and lost of three on that one. So third down, 22. Two receivers left, one receiver to the right side. Now make it trips left for cut right and the shotgun. He just immediately takes off running right side. No flag. Malachi Wood was held as cut right gets yeah. into the end zone. It was a clear hold on Malachi Wood. <laughs> Coach Blair yelling at the official as the touchdown goes across the goal line and another score. Check out this replay. See if we can see where Wood was held. Yeah, right there, right, number 50, just grabbing the jersey of Malachi Wood. No flag as cut right, just leaps into the end zone and scores the touchdown 20 to nothing. Brian Station as the extra point coming your way. 21 nothing defenders on top. Man, they are looking hard to beat here tonight on WBON TV. So if I buy this today, I get free service for life? Uh, something like that. Congratulations. Thanks. What, what is this? Oh, it's uh, standard. It's in the contract. So I get all this for free? Yeah, something like that. I trust you two. You can keep the pen. Everything OK? I'm just looking for the string. <laughs> the books are 100% free. No strings attached. All the books an undergraduate will need, all free. The city of Richmond has seen improvements over the years, but I have seen firsthand that there is more to be done. The citizens of Richmond deserve a better quality of life, more economic opportunity, and a revitalized downtown area. If we want a prosperous city that is moving forward, we need to focus on improving our streets, sidewalks, and infrastructure. We need to work together to help Richmond become better. A vote for me is a vote for better. I'm Mindy Goble, and I'm asking for your vote. Proceeding paid for by candidate. Defenders kicking off here after that touchdown to make it 21-0. Cut right, the quarterback just took off. Official missed a hold of Malachi Wood trying to get to him. Still might have scored, Tom, if, you know, if there wasn't a hold, but right. Wood never given a chance as this one's going to be returned. I think that's Kaiser on the return. Hayden running far side across the 25 to the 26-yard line, 9.7 to play, and Tom Madison Central Needs a regroup here. They need to try to find a way to just recharge, 
Take one of those batteries unlimited timeouts. Recharge themselves here at halftime. Game's still a long way to go. I mean, you can put up 21 points in the quarter. We've seen them do it this season. But they got to find us. Uh, got to make those proper adjustments if they want to come back in this ball game. Central will receive the second half kickoff. Let's see what they do here on first and 10 with just under 10 seconds to play in the half. By not being able to move the football, this defense is well rested for yeah. Bryant Station, too. Yeah, we'll bring you the stats here in just a moment. You're in the halftime show. Harrison going to give it to Hensley, running left side. Brady finally finds a hole for the first time tonight. Might be a case of too little, too late. Will Central stop the clock with a timeout? Let's see if they called a timeout. I believe they did. Station wanting to walk off the field. That's the first big play. That's the longest play of the night for Madison Central by far. They did call a timeout. We'll see how much time they put on the clock here. And I would say about four seconds if I was guessing somewhere through there. Yeah, timeout Indians. 3.2. 3.2 on the clock. Ball at the 48-yard line. So this is range time to throw one deep. Again, we'll have all the halftime stats provided by Glenn and the folks over at uh, WL Stats on the Fayette County Corrections halftime show coming up here in just a few moments. First down and 10 for the Indians after that big play by Hagen, uh, by Brady Hensley, who's really been bottled up tonight. But give credit to that offensive line. I think Brian Station thought Central might just take a knee there or maybe just do something and, and, and go on into the half. Mike Oakham, who's always been an aggressive head coach, stays that way on that play in a nice pickup to set up a potential maybe a Hail Mary attempt here into the end zone. About 23 yards on that run. So it's first and 10. Harrison going to be back by himself. It's Trevor Dennis, Parker Mullins, and Brady Hensley near side. On that far side, like it's Bryant Mathis and Jaden West. As Harrison with five wide here on the final play of the first half. Hagen pressured, stays upright. He'll chuck it downfield and is it picked off? Either way, it's the final play of the half. It is intercepted, but that won't matter except for in the stat category. First half comes to an end. Madison Central down 21 to nothing. They got to find a way, Tom, to regroup and get some momentum going in the second half and try to find a way to get back into this ball game. District title on the line. Brian Station in charge at the half. We'll come back for the Fayette County Corrections halftime show and give you the stats on WBON TV. Orthopedic and Sport Physical Therapy will help guide you on your road to recovery. It is our mindset, a spirit driven to excellence, to help people heal faster and better. If you have pain or an injury or you need experts in sports medicine, Orthopedic and Sports Physical Therapy is your best choice in rehabilitation and you have direct access. In most cases, you do not need a referral to any of our seven locations serving the region. Just give OSPTKY a call. Visit our website at OSPTKY.com to find the location nearest you. Do you have dripping registers like this? Drywall issues like this? High humidity can cause a very uncomfortable and sometimes damaging environment. It doesn't matter the age of your system. Improper installation and sizing are the failure. Here at Madison HVAC, we look at your home as a complete system, not just the pieces of equipment attached to your house. Give us a call today at 859-625-1471 so we can provide your solution. And remember, we fix that too. Who makes the best meal in Richmond? Nuevo Vallarta. Friendly service, a place that's good for kids and good for groups. Head to Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Nuevo Vallarta is known for warm hospitality, great prices, great food, and the best fajitas in town. Start with an appetizer, order a la carte, or choose from their huge menu of Mexican favorites for grown-ups and kids. Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Since opening in 1972, Citizens Guarantee Bank has been there to help our customers enhance their lives and achieve their dreams. With seven locations across Central and Eastern Kentucky today, we are celebrating 50 years of being there for the communities we call home. Citizens Guarantee Bank is now CG Bank. New name 
same, same commitment to being there for our neighbors. CG Bank, we've been there for that. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Chenault Vineyards has become a premier destination in Richmond for family and friends looking for fun and entertainment. The vineyard sits on 500 acres with breathtaking views and several different things for you to enjoy while you're there. Live music, tastings, tours, a walking trail, or maybe you'd like to host your own event at the vineyard. Visit ChenultVineyards.com to check out the complete list of upcoming events. Like them on Facebook to stay informed or like Chenault Vineyards on Instagram. At Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry, we value our patient relationships, making it our priority to deliver the gentle, compassionate care that you deserve from a dentist. We offer patients single-visit restoration on crowns, bridges, inlays, onlays, and veneers with Cirac. Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry is equipped to handle all your dental needs, from implants, teeth whitening, root canal therapy, and more. For your next dental appointment and for more details on lip filler and disport specials, call Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry at 859-985-0. Back here live on WBON TV and the Fayette County Corrections Halftime Show. Folks, are you still searching for a job with great pay and benefits? Well, Fayette County Corrections is hiring starting at $20 an hour with a long list of benefits and incentives. Visit LexingtonKY.gov slash corrections jobs to apply today. Madison Central down 21 nothing at the half here against Bryan Station. And, Tom, it has been... Really hard for the Indians to get anything going offensively. I saw Keith Farmer from LEX 18, one of our media partners down there on the sideline. A couple of the other TV stations just getting here at halftime. And if they're getting here at halftime and seeing this score, they're probably surprised as well. We know Bryan Station is good. Not that they're not, you know, good enough to win this ball game, but just the way they're winning and the way they are uh, handling things out there on the field on both sides of the ball, kind of a dominant first half by them. Very dominant uh, time of possession. Uh, 16 minutes to what eight yeah so they've doubled time of possession they've converted five of nine uh, on uh, third down two of two on fourth down and uh, they're just doing everything right right now yeah central one of five on third down and that uh, only third down conversion came on their opening drive so they've really been unable to do anything offensively 62 total yards on 18 plays for the Indians and a third of those came on that final running play by Brady Hensley. Right. 21 yards on that uh, that carry on that final drive before the half came to an end. So just no momentum. And again, early on, I think it was the second drive of the game for Madison Central, Travis Grant went out with an injury. It was, an, it was again, not speculating. I'm not sure what the injury was. Uh, Dawson Moore was trying to get us an update, but his return, uh, doubtful, if not already listed as out. But after that play, when Grant went out with that injury, Central just never could uh, seem to muster up any offense, kind of like they had the breath knocked out of him and they never could seem to regain it. That's what it looked like there in the first half when uh, he went out with that injury. Other stats from the first half, uh, again, total offense, 18 plays, 62 yards for Central, 41 plays, 269 for Bryan Station. And there's been some, some penalties against each team as well. Three for 25 against Madison Central, four for 35 against Bryan Station. Here's the crazy thing about those four penalties for the defenders. Three of those took away scores. Yeah. This game could be even worse than what it is, Tom. Oh, yeah. it's, a, it's just really been a really surprising first half. Madison Central, again, still a long way to go, still a chance to come back in this game. Just got to go into the locker room, and Coach Holcomb has got to give a good halftime speech. He can rally the troops, obviously. He's a great motivator. Over 300 wins in his career. Let's see what the um, the modifications are, if you will, when the team comes out in the second half because they will receive the second half kickoff. It'll be very important to put points on the board when they come out of the locker room there to start the third quarter. Let's step aside for a quick commercial break. When we come back, we will look at some of the individual stats from there in the first half here on the Fayette County Corrections Halftime Show. Back in three minutes here live on WBON-TV. 
Looking for some fun this fall? The Galaxy Bowling Center has a league for you. No matter your skill level, you can come out, make some new friends, and have a great time. Call 624-4444 for details. Or if you're more of a trivia person, Champions Bar and Grill has you covered every Tuesday starting at 7 with great prizes and all-you-can-eat wings for only $19.99. Why go anywhere else? The Galaxy Bowling Center and Champions Bar and Grill. Your ticket to fun just off I-75, exit 87 in Richmond. It's the common thread that ties us together, making life better for everyone. At CVNB, that means better banking, better accounts and lending, better experiences, better schools and better communities. Better. It's what ties us together. CVNB. Bank better. Need a physical for school or work? Need it right away? No problem! Berea Urgent Care has two convenient locations along with late hours to meet your needs. They're affordable too. Physicals at Berea Urgent Care only $20. DOT and CDL physicals are only $65. Berea Urgent Care number one by Walmart is open every day 9 to 9. Berea Urgent Care number two by Berea Drug open Monday through Friday 10 to 6. No appointment necessary. Berea Urgent Care, here when you need us. Ever tell you about the time I zipped right past that dang Sasquatch? I don't think so. Yes, sir, I don't know how I ever got away if it wasn't for this brand new side-by-side I got at Gateway Cycles. In Mount Sterling? Yes, sir, they set me up with something that left old Sasquatch sneezing in my dust. <laughs> Jimbo! Lord, I hear him coming back now. That ain't no Sasquatch. That's Mama. Get a great deal on Sasquatch eluders today. Gateway Cycles, Mount Sterling. To some, it's just a boat. But to Jim, it's his escape from meetings, traffic, and the grind of daily life. He may not catch any keepers, but he wouldn't trade his day on the lake for anything in the world. That's why his boat is insured by Kentucky Farm Bureau. But it's not just Kentucky's Farm Bureau. It's Jim's Recharge the Battery Farm Bureau. My Farm Bureau. David Mayo, John Rader, and Chris Hornsby with Kentucky Farm Bureau. Batteries Unlimited in Richmond can energize you when your batteries fade out. They can also cut and make most home and automobile keys, replace and program key fobs, and make copies of your house keys. Plus, cell phone screen repair. Bring in your Apple or Samsung today. We are your home for all batteries. Go see Chris at Batteries Unlimited, Commercial Drive in Richmond. Back here on WBON TV at the Fayette County Corrections Halftime Show. Folks, if you or somebody you know is still searching for a job with great pay and benefits, well, the Fayette County Corrections in Lexington is hiring. And they're starting out at $20 an hour with a long list of benefits and incentives. Visit LexingtonKY slash corrections jobs to apply today. And Tom Madison Centrum leading away to kind of tighten up the loose ends. A rough first half for the Indians. Again, not, not much going there offensively. Down 21 nothing at the half. And looking at some of the individual stats for Madison Central. Brady Hensley, eight carries, 39 yards. Over half of those coming on that last uh, play, or basically last play there in the first half at 21 uh, yards on that final carry. Hagen Harrison, three of seven through the air, 16 yards, all three of his completions going to Jaden West. And, you know, it's it's just, it's been a rough first half. Pat Morin's been the MVP of the first half, had yeah. four punts for 169 yards, and that 65-yarder, yeah. that pushed Brian Station back. They eventually turned that drive into points, did the defenders. But it's just been a rough first half, both sides of the ball for Madison Central. Got to find a way, I think, to get some points on the board here in the second half. Yeah, it's uh, very important that they come out and uh, move the ball down the field and uh, score and uh, cut into this lead right away. And that will give them enough momentum for the defense uh, to play some defense and uh, try to prevent uh, what's been going on here? It's like uh, 
They're pretty well even. I noticed that Monday Lloyd had almost 100 yards rushing in that first half and and uh, passing 126 yards from their quarterback in the first half as well. So you're looking at a couple hundred yard rushing game and a 250 yard passing game. So yeah. they're they're mixing their plays up well and they're they're keeping Madison Central off balance. Yeah, Madison Central uh, defensively. Hayden Kaiser has been a beast. Five and a half tackles. Eliza Steele's got five stops. A sack for Kaiser as well, and a uh, tackle and a half for loss uh, as well. But yeah, Monday Lloyd, 17 carries, 93 yards. Cut right himself's got 42 yards on the ground, and he's also got 126 through the air. Haskins Jr., five catches, 79 yards, and a pair of touchdown catches in the game. Been a big difference right now. Madison Central, Bryan Station, the two teams just trying to you know, win a district title here tonight in the regular season. Again, last year it didn't matter for Madison Central. They lost at home in late October to Bryan Station. A few weeks later came up here and you know, ran away with the game, 41-18 here on the road in the postseason. So it, it didn't matter last year, but I think this year it's a different Madison Central team. Yeah, they're still good. Yeah, they got a nice record, but they're, they're missing some of those uh, seniors from last year, and I think that's really shown here in this game tonight. Guys like Jeffrey Kinley and Edgren Sweat, and, and Evan Dexter, an offensive lineman uh, last year who, who was a big piece of, of you know providing holes for Brady Hensley. I think those three guys, obviously they're seniors, so they're gone, but I think we're really seeing what they provided last year not being here tonight and not playing this year. Yeah, it's, it's you know, different team, di different atmosphere, and uh, somebody needs to take charge. Uh, on the defense tonight, the way they've been playing here in this first half. Normally, they're very stout, yeah. and uh, they've showed uh, some signs of that tonight, but it needs to be on every play. Madison Central, too good to be shut out, folks. We'll see if they can uh, uh, put some points on the board. They'll receive the second half kickoff here in just a few moments. So, halftime stats provided by Bluegrass Marble and Granite of Richmond. Make your home stand out among the rest with Bluegrass Marble and Granite in Richmond. They specialize in kitchen and bathroom countertops and can also provide unique looks for your fireplace, outdoor grills, and other areas of your home. Visit them online at bluegrassmarblegranite.com and get started today. Madison Central, Bryan Station, second half coming your way on the other side of this commercial break. Thanks for joining us here, folks, live on WBON-TV. Hey, Madison County. Did you know Berea Ace Hardware is more than just a hardware store? Berea Ace Hardware carries the top brands like Skag, Echo, Steel, Spartan, Toro, Bintelli e-bikes, Wolf Brand scooters, Trailmaster go-karts, and Red Cat Racing RC cars. Check us out at BereaAce.com. We sell fun at Berea Ace. This is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Granite, marble, and quartz for any surface. Make a lifetime commitment you won't regret. Support local and get your vehicle running at its peak performance with CT Diesel Performance off exit 97 in Richmond. Chris Thorne and his staff specialize in diesel performance and repair that will service any vehicle, big or small, with oil changes, brakes, tires, alignments, and more. Broke down and need a tow? Well, call CT Diesel at 859-699-8712. Like them on Facebook to enter a weekly drawing for a free oil change. CT Diesel Performance off exit 97 in Richmond. Being prepared for various types of disasters is one of the best ways to ensure the safety of your family, friends, and community. The Madison County Emergency Management Agency and the Chemical Stockpile Emergency Preparedness Program is here and ready to support community emergency response. For how to be prepared, make emergency kits, Know your zone and shelter in place information. Contact EMA CSEP at 624 4787 or visit madisoncountyky.us forward slash EMA. Madison County EMA CSEP, your partner in preparedness. 
For four years we've been into office here and we have really changed Richmond from not today. Commissioner McDaniel helped us get a facility up here. It's the old Senior Citizen Center and it's uh, turned into a Class A facility. For four years we've operated under budget. We've uh, increased our employee pay 20%. Ed's always been there uh, in support of uh, youth softball and girls softball. This is Ed McDaniel and I'm asking for your vote on November the 8th. Proceeding paid for by candidate. Back here on the Fayette County Corrections Halftime Show. Thank you for joining us here on the Fayette County Corrections Halftime Show. Be sure to visit LexingtonKY.gov slash corrections jobs if you're looking for a job today. Also, a special thanks to some of our special sponsors for the game tonight, folks. Re-elect Republican Steve Tussie for Madison County Jailer, a native of Madison County who has proven he is a man of integrity and commitment. That's paid for by Steve Tussie. On November 8th, vote to keep Mike Coyle as your Madison County Sheriff. That's also paid for by the candidate. And vote to re-elect Reagan Taylor as your Madison County Judge Executive to keep building a better Madison County. Paid for by the friends of Reagan Taylor for Judge Executive Myron Fisher Treasurer. And tonight's game also brought to you by John Tudor, your Magistrate for District 3 in Madison County. Vote to re-elect John Tudor as your Magistrate on November 8th. Paid for by the candidate. Tom, those sponsors coming on for tonight's game. We've got a long list of folks who have been with us from the very start of the year. Yeah. We could not be here if it weren't for the great folks over at Bishop Small Engine Repair, CT Diesel Performance, Jerry Goble State Farm Insurance, Jack Burford Chevrolet, Chenault Vineyards as well, and Nuevo Vallarta, also Madison HVAC. All those great sponsors. Thank you all for being with us all year long. So many more that you see throughout the game. Whitaker Bank, Berea A. Hardware, Madison County CSEP, uh, Batteries Unlimited, Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry, Gateway Cycles, uh, also Citizens Guarantee Bank. You know, we'll be over at CG Bank Field tomorrow night as well uh, for the EKU game at home. And appreciate all those great sponsors. You know, we're talking about Chenault Vineyard. they got a big event coming up in uh, November. It'll be Saturday, November 26th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's the Holiday Barn Market. It's uh, going to be an all-day shopping event full of uh, shopping with vendors, a coffee truck. They'll have some uh, drinks there for you as well. Fun for the kids, pictures with Santa and live entertainment and all kinds of fun events taking place at the Holiday Barn Market on November 26th. You can uh, be sure to like Chenault Vineyards on Facebook to learn more about that event coming up. And we'll have more on that during the postgame show. We'll also crown our CT Diesel performance, performance of the game after the game tonight. Right now, that performance you know, for Madison Central has been, Hayden Cash has been good defensively, and then uh, Pat Moore has been a pretty good job of punting the ball for Madison Central tonight as well. Here we go, second half underway. Madison Central will get a nice return here, set up nicely. Let's see if we can get something going offensively on the far side of the field. Running out of bounds for the Indians. It's number 35. Get him on your roster, Tom. Madison Central. Let me check it here and see. I got to turn some lights on here. I can't see it. Yeah, they got the lights turned off on us, trying to set the mood for us up here. Yeah, they need candles or something. <laughs> Who was it again? 35. Uh, do not have a 35 on my roster. So, I'm trying to see on the website here. We'll try to get that name for you as we move throughout the second half. But if it, offensively, Indians trying to get it going. Yeah, WL stats don't have a 35 on their roster as well. So we'll try to. That, that could have been Brock Eads. Eads might have had to change his jersey. We'll see if we can uh, find that out as we go through the second half here. Madison Central down 21 nothing. Second half beginning here. Harrison, handoff, Hensley, and Brady runs right into a tackle. Might have got a yard, and that's it. Not much. The quick hitters right up the gut. Um, you can literally see the white jerseys being pushed back when contact is made, and uh, the, the, the winners of the line of scrimmage right now are the uh, – Green uniforms and the yellow helmets. Yeah, I think 35 is Brock Eads. He's, he's playing a position as where Eads would be at. I, I'm going to I'm gonna try. I'm going to guess that that's Brock Eads. Out there might have had some blood on his uniform and had to change jerseys. Here's a pass out to West. Now, that's been there all night long. Yep. Jaden's had three catches for 16 yards. All three of those catches were in that exact kind of location where he ran a quick out and uh, picked up. 
a first down on that one. Much needed, and and uh, you need to march it right down the field here. If you got to do that every other play, do it. Do what works. Get the ball down there in the end zone and cut this lead to 14 and then see what happens. First down and 10. Indians moving the sticks on a Harrison to Jaden West pass and catch. Back to Hensley. Up the middle and gains two. You know, it's not the same offensive line that we saw last year, and tonight there's no Rowland Rhodes. A couple of guys coming back from injury tonight, Max Murphy and Yari Gillis. So they're, they're back, but they're still not really at full strength up front, Tom, and that's also shown tonight as they've tried to work through some things here in this ball game. But you were right, still need to find a way to put some points on the board on this drive. Second down and eight. Harrison back to Hensley. They're pulling a guard near side. Hensley hit and taken down. That is great pursuit and a big time tackle. Number 35 for Bryan Station. Jason Parker and a Drake in there on the stop for the defenders. Yeah, 52, uh, Noah Israel also hustling over to help out on that tackle. So third down, Hensley got a yard, third and six. Band starting to pick up their play here. It's a big third down for Madison Central. Tom, I think if they get a couple of yards here, they're going to go for it on fourth down. But all night long, we've seen that pass to Jaden West has been there. Let's see if they go back to that. He's near side, matched up with Mayshawn Baker-Thomas. They'll fake it to Hensley. And Harrison going over the middle. Pass deflected. And as Thomas Baker on the stop, check out the pass. Harrison puts it on the money. It's a little bit low, but still it was right there. West almost able to pick it up on the second effort, but the pass falls incomplete. Fourth down, and Central's got to punt it now. Green and is that Haskins Jr.? Yeah, it's Haskins Jr. back to return. Moore got a 65-yarder off on his last punt. Could use another one of those. Yeah, about make it about 57 yards, and you'll have them pinned against their own goal line. Pat, and eh, not going to be far enough this time. Kind of came off the foot bad and goes out of bounds. And Brian Station will have tremendous field position to start wow. this drive. Yeah, as good as that last one was, that one. About what a, it out, didn't it? About a 14-yard <laughs> punt yeah. in tow. Just didn't get all of it. Pat Moran's been so good tonight. He's had a lot of opportunities, too, as well. First and 10, Bryan Station now at the 44-yard line. Ball on the left, hash mark, as the defenders will try to march it up the field again. Tom, they get a score here. They might put this game away. Yeah, it's 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 danger zone right now for the Indians. They have got to get a stop here and get that football back. They need something to get them some momentum. First down and ten. Two receivers to the far side for cut right. He'll hand it off right side. And running in that direction, number 34 is Devon Frazier. They got him one yard on that carry. Good defense that time by the Indians, able to sniff that out right from the get-go and get a helmet on him, and that slowed him down enough to where he got a good assist there on the tackle. 9.05 to play. Second down and eight. Cut right. Going to hand it off, Monday Lloyd immediately hit and then taken down. A nice hit there in the backfield by the Indians. Yeah. Nice job there. Just a great job of sniffing the play out. A nice hole to run through. And the, the cool thing about that is I think he hid behind one of his defensive linemen that time. They did not see him coming, didn't get a hand on him. And he was in the backfield about the time the football arrived. Sam Farmer. Looking like a hunter on that one, hunting down the ball carrier. It's third and long. Cut right. Going to throw out quickly to Haskins Jr. It's incomplete. So Central forces a three and out and a big time That's stop there nice. by the defense. Had to have that, and they got the job done. So let's see now. 
if they can use the momentum that they got from giving, stopping them right there and uh, can bring the football back, get a nice return here, set up, and get that offense working good. That time, that second down stop by Farmer, providing a little bit of a, of a, of a momentum shift. I'll get it out here in a minute. Here's the punt. Jaden West calls for a fair catch, and he'll make it at the 24-yard line. So Indians take over from there. Tom, let's see if that momentum shift can give the Indians something to work with here on offense. I think so. I think it's, uh, you know, they're not out of this game by any means right now. But with only 8.09 to go here in the third quarter, uh, you got to start uh, moving the football. You got to start getting going in the positive direction and uh, get some points. I don't care if you come down and get a field goal, just come down and get some points. Your defense has already proved they can stop them. Appreciate you joining us here on WBON TV. If you're watching on their cable channel over the air as well, Spectrum Channel 712, 9.1 over the air, man. That's a big loss as the Indians just nowhere to go for Jaden West. A little reverse trying to get tricky with it. And a nice tackle in the backfield by Zechariah Dabney. That's what we caught, talked about on the pregame, okie doke. This is not a game to throw an okie doke yeah. in. And you're, you're down 21 points, and uh, you just gave them 10 more yards going in the opposite direction or you make know, it 12. I understand just they're trying to just find something that will work, maybe try to catch them off guard. But the thing is, if you don't execute that play to perfection, you can see the repercussions of it. Second down and long now. Harrison going to fake it to Hensley. He's looking over the middle. Throws pass complete to Parker Mullins. On the near side, that'll make it third and ten. Make it out of bounds on the near side is Mullins. It'll be third and nine. So gained about 12 there on the pass to Mullins. Yeah. Need one here now. Need a big third down conversion right here. 7 12 to play. Clock stop with Mullins going out of bounds. I think this has got to be Jaden West time. West coming near side. Now shifts spots with Warwick's and runs far side. They'll fake it to Hensley. Harrison pressured. Gets away. Got to get rid of it. He does. And Jaden West makes the catch. Big time play, West came across the middle from the far side and picks up a first down. Great job by Hagen Harrison, eluding the pressure. Check out the replay, puts it up for grabs and his star wide receiver goes up and makes the catch. Uh, I don't think Hayden would want that pass graded by any means. It was more of a wounded yeah. duck, but <laughs> nice job and good heads up play there by West able to uh, you know, stop his momentum, able to go up and make sure that he caught that football. Jaden grabbing his hamstring as he runs off the field. They'll go ground attack with Hensley up the middle. Brady shifts over, picks up a first down, still moving those feet, and a good job by Works to push him forward to the 41-yard line, and the Indians finally, for the first time tonight, Tom putting a drive together. Much needed in the deepest penetration that they've had in this game, and it's nice to see him on the opponent's 40-yard line. Now we need another 10 here on this play and get it down to the 30-yard line. First and 10. Hensley, second longest run of the game for him. Nice pickup there on a first down. They'll go back to him, straight up the middle again. Hensley moves it right side, and Tom, you wanted 10. How about 11? First I'll down, Indians to the 30. Now this is what they're capable of doing, and it took that defensive stop to get them fired up again, and now here we go. Got to finish it off, though. It's first and 10 inside the 30-yard line. Ball between the 30 and the 29 inside Bryan Station territory. Jaden West back in the game, and Bryan Station almost came across, able to get back to their position here as Harrison looks far side to Mike Holcomb to get the play call in. Well, they're picking the right time. Maybe they're just waiting on the cameras from the news stations. 
Well, that won't work. Hand off to Hensley. <laughs> Wrapped up immediately and brought down. And losing half a yard back to the 30 and a half yard line. It'll be second down and 11. And this is for sure four down territory with where you're at here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Down by three scores. You've got to have something. Got to have six for sure. So Mike Oakham, I don't care if it's fourth and 30, they'll have to go for it. Second down and 11 at the moment as Harrison and the Indians break the huddle. Works to the near side, three receivers left. As Harrison rolls out in that direction, looking deep, got a man, and that's, I think that's Brock Eads who makes a nice catch and a first down. Yeah, great catch. One-handed catch, too, and he's able to haul it in and goes out of bounds. Checking with Dawson Rule, who's right there near that catch to see if that is Eads. I'm 90% I'm sure we'll check with Dawson and get confirmation on that. 4.51 to play. Harrison, going to go back to the shotgun, see if they go back to the ground here. They will. Hensley on the counterattack. Tries to run up the middle. Nowhere to go. He'll lose half a yard. It'll be second down and long for Madison Central. Clock under five minutes to play. Central's got to punch one in here and get some momentum and give them a chance to come back in this ball game. Yeah, that is, so that is Brock Eads. Dawson Rule confirming that for us. So Eads must have had some blood on his uniform, and they forced him to change. So Brock Eads tonight, 35 is Brock Eads, Glenn. Brock yeah. Yeah, blood on his jersey. So Dawson confirming that for us. Indians with some trickery. Here is Eads. Cuts it back. Brock still on his feet, and he's eventually brought down. He's bounced off a couple of tacklers there. Brian Station saying they have the football. No, no signal yet. No. We've seen this several times tonight. With they're the, both doing the same thing. The ball once the once the players down and the whistle blows, they they jump up, and leave the ball there, and somebody else jumps on it. Yeah, he just bouncing off tacklers, but just couldn't break loose. Third quarter with 3:50 to go, must. Must score somehow down here. Going to run the option play. Harrison will keep it and runs right into his own player and brought down. So it's going to be fourth down and about six. Just nowhere to run here on the near side as they try to set up that option play. Even if he would have pitched it to Hensley, Brady wouldn't have had any room to run. 3.26 to play, and Tom, they got to go for it here, fourth and six, and the game could come down to this one. If Central scores, or even if they get a first down, they've still got life. Biggest play of the game coming up here, and maybe to this point, biggest play of the season. So in part, Mike Oakham will call a timeout, and we will step aside and take a Batteries Unlimited timeout on WBON-TV. Hi there, I'm Alan Feldhaus Jr., head basketball coach at Madison Central High School. Here at MCHS, we have built a winning team. And I'd like to tell you about another local winning team, family owned and operated Bluegrass Restoration and Construction. They specialize in roofing, general construction, and home maintenance services. Just like on the court, you need a team that will work together to get the job done. And that's exactly what BRC does. Give them a call at 859-353-1133. Road Tribe. Want to make dinner a true winner? This is Temptation times 12. Get the ultimate family meal at Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken with our 12-piece family meal at a great price. Try the new Cajun Combo for just $5.99 or feed a family with three new Inflation Busters meal deals. Back here on WBON TV. Folks, don't forget, coming up later on tonight on our TV channel, if you're watching on Spectrum, got uh, a long list of uh, good shows coming up. Forensic Files coming up at 10 o'clock, followed by back to back episodes of Cheaters. Harrison trying to throw. He will, and it's caught by Mullins. What a play 
a potential district title saving catch in the end zone by Parker Mullins. Check out this bluegrass restoration and construction replay. Harrison at the last second tries to find Mullins. The pass deflected, but Parker right there in the end zone to haul it in. Wow, what a play, Tom. That could be a potential district championship saving touchdown from Harrison to Mullen. Still a long way to climb back in this one, but at the moment, the Indians at least have a chance. More and on for the PAT. The hold is down. The kick is up. It's 21-7, Madison Central. Down by 14, 302 to play on WBON TV. I'm Michelle, and I'm Jennifer, and in the spring of 1992, Bishop Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Estill County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cupcake, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shandawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop's Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estill Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see you. Fayette County Corrections is seeking to fill several positions now. The pay is great along with a long list of benefits and incentives, but the relationships created on the job are one thing that can't be taken for granted. It allowed me to kind of gather in that family feel the feel of camaraderie along with my fellow officers uh, and, and to get to know people and see them uh, flourish in their career and, and to be an opportunity to try to help them along the way to share my experiences. Apply today at LexingtonKY.gov slash corrections jobs. Back here on WBON TV, you see Pat Moore about to kick it away. Kick one in the end zone here, Pat. It'll be returned from inside the five by Green. He'll run near side, runs through a tackle, and a big return oh, coming no. for Brian Station. Not what Central needed, but it will give the defenders excellent field position to start this drive. Looking for a flag. Is there a flag? No, Pat Morin was the last man to beat, and he knocked him out of bounds. So Morin runs him out of bounds. So a break there. As the defenders begin the drive at the Madison Central 45-yard line. So they'll get the best field position of their night. 21-7 score, Madison Central putting their first points on the board, and Tom looked pretty good in doing so on a nice long drive to get in the end zone. Now it's cut right back to work. Hand off Monday Lloyd near side, and he breaks a tackle of Elijah Steele. Steele on his feet, and inside the 35-yard line, down to the 26-yard line. So a big pickup on first down of 19 for Monday Lloyd. Well, the thing you can't have happen is, is you can't have them come down and score because if they do, it, it pretty much nullifies yeah. that seven points you just put on the board. Yeah, got to get a stop here. Now Brian Station pretty much in four down territory. First and ten as cut right goes back up under center, and you got to be careful of that deep pass in this formation. Hand off Monday Loy straight up the gut, and he turns forward for another first down, gains 12. Just bouncing off tacklers. Monday Lloyd has been the go-to man tonight. Had a big first half. And now over 100 yards in the game for the starting tailback for Brian Station. Tommy had seven or had a 93 there in the first half. Now over 130 yards in the ball game. First down and 10. Back to the same formation. Back to the running back, Monday Lloyd. And he's hit and wrapped up. It's taking three guys to bring him down. On the Lord, his forward momentum just carrying him. And he'll gain five yards there on a first down carry. Second down and five from the 10 yard line. As Joe Dean Sr. used to say, he's a horse. You can't bring him down. He's too big. Third quarter clock winding down. A minute 35 to play. Madison Central needing a stop here. Brian Station trying to answer. And maybe put this one away. Handoff. Mondelori tripped. 
And the ball came out. Madison Central saying they've got it. No signal yet. But the ball did come out. Ball came out. Still no signal. Central says they have the ball, but was he down before the ball came loose? Madison Central dancing around as if they have the football. And Brian Station saying they're going to keep it. The officials chatting here. They're going to say he was down before the ball came out. So Brian Station will keep possession here. It'll be third down and five for the defenders. And if you're Madison Central, you're going to have to get two stops here. Cut right as the Indians run a player in right before the snap. Dangerous there. Give it to Mondillo again. Left side and a touchdown for Brian Station. Monday Lloyd just running through the hole, running into the end zone, running over defenders, and Brian Station might be running away with a district title. 27-7, Madison Central down. And the extra point pending here for the defenders. Check out the replay here. Mon Deloitte just runs through the hole, spins. And he's been so good with that spin tonight. Spins his way into the end zone and a score. 28-7, 57 seconds to play. We'll be back in one minute on WBON-TV. Whether you're in the market for a brand new Chevrolet, you're looking for a pre-owned quality vehicle, or your family car is in need of service by our GM certified technician, Jack Burford has what you need. Come to Jack Burford Chevrolet in Richmond for all of your automotive needs. Family owned and operated since 1964, Jack Burford Chevrolet is your hometown Chevrolet dealership. Check us out at jackburford.com or come in and see us today. We are located on the EKU bypass across the street from Walmart. Jake from State Farm, I would like to formally extend my gratitude for the Russell rate on my insurance. Do you mean surprisingly great rates from State Farm? I don't believe in accepting help, but I'll make an exception. Here's the deal, Russell. There's no special rate. These prices are for everyone. Consider us square. I made that from memory. I know your face that well. When you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Jerry Goble in Richmond today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Jaden West returning it for the Indians, tackled by Green on the play, and Madison Central, after a score, Tom on their second drive of the third quarter, gives up a quick answer by the defenders, and it's a 28-7 lead for Bryan Station with 49.3 to play. Get our scoreboard fixed. There we go, Gage. 28-7 score. Yeah, good good. 49.3 to play. Central got to add some points here, Tom. You know, I think they got to get a quick score in a couple of minutes. They got to put some points on the board and give themselves a chance in that fourth quarter. Long way to go in doing so. Ball at their own 27. Harrison looking. Chase out of the pocket again and just throws it away. Yeah, I, I like some of the motions they're running, Tom, but Harrison yeah. – has just been unable to sit there in the pocket and let the play develop. He's been chased out of there. The offensive line, again, some of these guys just coming back. Gillis off the injury, Max Murphy off the concussion protocol. He was just, you know, released to play today. So they're kind of, you know, just getting their legs back under them. And Brian Station has been forcing Harrison to run around all night long. Second down and 10. Two receivers to the near side. Brock Eads wearing number 35 here. Now trips right, one receiver left. They'll run it with Hensley. And Brady gains a yard. Third down and nine coming up for Madison Central. And that might be the final play of the third quarter. Indians down 28 to seven. Let's see if the Indians try to get another snap off. They might get a chance because of an injured Brian Station player. 
Once again, we want to say thank you to some of our great sponsors, folks who've been with us all season long. You see these folks out there like Orthopedic Sports and Physical Therapy, Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, Raider Mayo and Hornsby, Bluegrass Marble and Granite, Jack Burford Chevrolet, Gateway Cycle, Chenault Vineyards, Batteries Unlimited, Fayette County Corrections in Lexington, Berea Ace Hardware, Lee's Famous Recipe Berea. All those great sponsors and so many more. You'll see their ads played throughout the game. Go by and, and tell them thank you for supporting us and letting us get out here and highlighting the great athletes we have in Madison County. You know, tonight we're here. Tomorrow night we've got the EKU tailgate show before the Colonel's homecoming game against North Alabama. And then on Monday, how about some volleyball action? The first round of the 11th Region Volleyball Tournament. Uh, Bryan Station, actually the host of the volleyball tournament, but the first round game is going to be whole, uh, held at the district champion site, and Madison Central won the 44th district championship. They'll host Lexington Catholic on Monday night, so we'll be there for that one, and uh, Madison Southern will play Scott County on Monday night over in Georgetown. So uh, the Central game, we will have it here for you on WBON-TV immediately following the sports show. On the sports show, we'll be joined by the Madison Central soccer team. We'll recap the Berea game from the night. Pirates currently down 17-7 against Frankfurt on the road heading into the fourth quarter. And we'll recap this game as well. We'll also look ahead to the volleyball tournament and senior night next week for Madison Central as the Indians welcome in Southwestern for the final regular season game of the year. It's third down and seven. Big play coming up. Indians need this to give themselves a chance to hang around in this game. They're going to fake it to Hensley. Harrison looking. He's got room to run. He'll have a first down. Spins away from a tackler and to the 45-yard line. It'll move the sticks and a nice play by the senior quarterback, Tom, using his legs, which he did a lot last year in that playoff game against Bryan Station. Over 100 yards rushing last year on this field in November and picks up the first down, and that will be the final play of the third quarter. Or will it? Central, will they get a playoff? No, they won't. Third quarter comes to an end. Indians down 28-7 to as we go to the fourth. Back in one minute here live on WBON-TV. So if I buy this today, I get free service for life? Uh, something like that. Congratulations. Thanks. What, what is this? Oh, it's uh, standard. It's in the contract. So I get all this for free? Yeah, something like that. I trust you too. You can keep the pen. Is everything okay? I'm just looking for the string. <laughs> the books are 100% free. No strings attached. All the books an undergraduate will need, all free. The city of Richmond has seen improvements over the years, but I have seen firsthand that there is more to be done. The citizens of Richmond deserve a better quality of life, more economic opportunity, and a revitalized downtown area. If we want a prosperous city that is moving forward, we need to focus on improving our streets, sidewalks, and infrastructure. We need to work together to help Richmond become better. A vote for me is a vote for better. I'm Mindy Goble, and I'm asking for your vote. Proceeding paid for by candidate. Madison Central picks up the first down as the third quarter comes to an end, and we enter the fourth. Crunch time now for the Indians. But Tom, a much better third quarter there for Madison Central. They had 62 yards in the first half, and in that third quarter, over 100 yards of offense for that quarter alone. So a much better third quarter. Got to do it again here, and they got to get some more stops on defense. Got to score quick. First and 10 from their own 44-yard line, but still, Enough time in this game to make a game of it if they can uh, get the job done on offense and score quickly. A gain of three on a first down carry to Hensley. You know, Hensley's just been nagged with injuries all year long. You know, that first uh, week against LCA, you know, the cramps were a major issue. Then he injured his ankle in the Dunbar game early and only played about 12 or 13 snaps in that game. And then missed the next six games. Didn't come back till the Oldham County game. And has played well the last two weeks. But was talking to him, you know, last week he came out. He actually had a, a, a like a, a pump knot come up on his his forearm. And he's got that forearm heavily taped up tonight. The right arm of Brady Hensley. As Harrison throws, pass complete to West. Jaden 
Chased out, but it gains nine for a first down. Moves the ball into Bryan Station territory, and again, that pass has been there all night long. Jaden West has been the go-to guy, and he's had a really good, not only season, but he's really had a good game tonight considering the offense has struggled as much as it has. The um, line oh, judge wow. had him marked on the line over there, and then the uh, umpire, the field umpire, he uh, moved the ball back a yard. That's a terrible spot. If you're Madison Central and Mike Holcomb letting the official know about it. So third and now one. Can Hensley get a yard? We won't tell. Harrison going to throw. He's looking. Chase Hagen trying to pick it up himself, and he will as he runs out. He was pushed late, and it will be a late hit yep. against a Bryan Station defensive player. Yeah, he's way out. When you're beyond that sideline and you're, you're coming, to get him, and you're going to go ahead and get him whether he's in bounds or not. That's when they will throw the flag on that. Malachi Wood coming over to help bring Jaden West back to the huddle. Oh, they're going to wave the flag off. Wow. Man, that one would have really helped the Indians push this ball down the field. They still get the first down, but that would have tacked on 15 yards to the end of that play. Well, Spot it back a yard and then wave off a <laughs> wave off an obvious penalty. Yeah. So first and ten, ball at the thirty at the forty-one yard line. Ten fifty-eight to play. Harrison ran out of bounds, so the clock stops. As Hagen has a four receiver set and hands it off to Hensley up the middle, and Hensley just there's been nothing there up the middle tonight. They're trying to run behind Malachi Wood, and Wood's pushing his guy out of the way. But, you know, the left guard in the center just unable to, to create that hole for Brady Hensley. Yeah, and by the time they start the play, then your linebackers are pursuing. And there's just nowhere to go. Three-yard gain by Hensley. He makes he, – he gets something out of nothing just about every yeah. time he touches the ball. Yeah, he's not been hit for a loss tonight. Had a couple of no gains, but you're not going to bring Brady Hensley down first contact most times. Second down. They're going to roll out right with Harrison. He'll throw. And a nice catch by Dennis on the far side. He's got a first down to the 26-yard line. So a nice drive being put together here, Tom. But again, when you put a nice drive together, it's good, but it takes a lot of time. I believe we've got uh, two timeouts left this half. He took one already. Harrison, hand off Hensley. There's a nice hole for him, running far side, but this time the linebacker awaiting and tackling the Madison Central star running back. Second down and about six. Harrison getting the play call in from Coach Holcomb. You got to think they're going to have to take a shot at some point and put this one in the end zone. Harrison looking left. He'll throw. Pass caught by Dennis. Trevor breaks a tackle and lost the ball. It's loose. Central picks it up, and Brock Eads was trying to run with it, but it'll be tackled inside the 10. So it's first and goal, Madison Central. Tom, you know, I know it's still early. But if you score here, do you think onside kick, or is it too early for that? Ah, uh, that's a tough one. First and ten. The way the game has gone, the flow of the game, I would go onside kick. At the five-yard line. Got to punch one in here. Hand off Hensley. He'll do his best, but not get in. Inside the five, down to the two, maybe down to the one. Yeah, they're going to give him inside the two. So basically at the one and a half yard line, second and goal under nine minutes to play. See if they go back to Brady here. Harrison, Hensley, handoff, touchdown. Madison's all oh, ball came out and Brian Station recovers it in the end zone. Touchback is the call. Central saying that Hensley got across before the ball came out. 
The, the line judge on the near side saying touchback. And that is going to be the call. Touchback. And let's check out the replay here. Hensley. I dove across. Man, that is a touchdown, folks. He dove across the goal line, and that's when the ball came out. That is a great shot. Let's check out that replay one more time, see if Gage can slow it down for us. Hensley dove across. He's across the goal line when the ball came out, but touchback is the call. Man, that is a tough way to lose out on some points if you're Madison Central. Now the defense got to go back to work. And it might be too little too late, Tom. Cut it right up under center. Monday Lloyd near side. A big hole. And he breaks the tackle. Pushed across and a first down from Monday Lloyd. Thought he was going to go out of bounds, but he did a good job. He stopped, let the defender run by, kept himself inbounds to keep that clock running, and he gains about 13 yards for a first down. Well, he's impressive, that's for sure. He's a uh, big, strong kid, and he likes to kind of like a Bam Bam Cuttingham or, yeah. a, you know, what was uh, Franco Harris? Was that yeah. style of runner as well? I'm going back in time a ways, I know. But. It's a downhill runner is Monday Lloyd. First yep. and ten for Bryan Station. They give it to him again. And good job of carrying the defense again. He gains eight yards. And he was hit about four yards before he was finally brought down, just carrying defenders with him. Jeremiah Mundy Lloyd, the big tailback for Bryan Station. And, and, Tom, he was good last year. He and Bond split time in the backfield. Bond was their, their starter, but he was more of like the, the Adrian Parks type of running back, small right. in stature, had good speed. Mundy Lloyd is their power back. He's been the go-to guy this year for the defenders. They go back to him, first down. And he moves the sticks and moves the pile with him across the 45 near midfield. And once again, first down, so Brian Station can start to milk that clock some more. Aiden Howard checking back in for Madison Central. Need the 42 for a first down. Cut right will go up under center. Again, just letting that clock run down here. 7.13 to play in the fourth. Back to Monday Lloyd. Cuts it out. And he's upended as Jaden West makes the tackle. And a flag comes in back behind the play. I believe Howard was held again. Yep, hold against Brian Station. That'll back it up some. But Tom, I mean, there's been, there's been a few deflating plays in this game, if you're Madison Central, Brady Hensley diving across the goal line, the ball comes out, and your chances of coming back in this game kind of come out with it. First and about 20 now. It's, you know, you can sit here and, and dissect, you know, all the you know the bad calls and, the, and everything seems to be going the wrong way here. Momentum definitely going the wrong way right yeah. now. But well, I mean even Bryan Station they've had three touchdowns called back yeah. themselves. Yes, so absolutely. They've had points taken off the board. Cut right, going to throw. He's going deep. Got a man, and that is great defense. Bryant Mathis again running stride for stride with Damon Green, who is a great athlete himself. And a speedster. Yeah, and Mathis just runs stride for stride with him, and now Green shaking up as he falls down at the 22-yard line. Great job, Bryant Mathis, on the coverage. Yeah, he, Mathis has been impressive with his defensive play here this evening. Yeah, the sophomore who, remember in that Pikeville game, he ran like a 60-something yard touchdown on offense. Mathis has shown some flashes this year. It'll be a guy we'll see more of next season for sure, the sophomore. 6.44 to play in an injury timeout. Let's step aside for a quick commercial break. Madison Central down 28-7. to We'll come back in one minute on WBON-TV. 
Orthopedic and Sport Physical Therapy will help guide you on your road to recovery. It is our mindset, a spirit driven to excellence, to help people heal faster and better. If you have pain or an injury or you need experts in sports medicine, Orthopedic and Sports Physical Therapy is your best choice in rehabilitation and you have direct access. In most cases, you do not need a referral to any of our seven locations serving the region. Just give OSPTKY a call. Visit our website at OSPTKY.com to find the location nearest you. Do you have dripping registers like this? Drywall issues like this? High humidity can cause a very uncomfortable and sometimes damaging environment. It doesn't matter the age of your system. Improper installation and sizing are the failure. Here at Madison HVAC, we look at your home as a complete system, not just the pieces of equipment attached to your house. Give us a call today at 859-625-1471 so we can provide your solution. And remember, we fix that too. Second down and long, cut right hands off to Mundy Lloyd. He runs right into Malachi Wood and trips up, brought down. Parker Mullins will get credit for the tackle as it will be up third down. Imagine yourself and you're, you're jogging. You're not really going in a sprint, and you're running, and a brick wall steps out in front of you. That's what it's like to hit Malachi yeah. Wood if you're a running back. It knocked him completely to the side, and... Nice job by the defense to get a stop there. Third down. And I like what Brian Station is doing. If you're, you know, a winning football team, got the clock in your favor, just take your time here. Work that clock and let it trickle down, especially with a three-touchdown lead under six minutes to play. And we were looking at that uh, turnover by Brady Hensley as Brian Station calls a timeout. Uh, Dawson Rule said uh, he got a great shot of the fumble. If you uh, have Twitter, head on over to WBON TV Sports. And Dawson's posted that on Twitter, the uh, look at the fumble. So we've got that shot. Uh, we we'll, uh, can't really show it to you on the live stream because Dawson's down there with his uh, his mobile, mobile camera for us. Uh, so we can't show it to you, but he did fumble before we got across the goal line. So it was the correct call. Just a tough break for Madison Central. 5.53 here left to play. Let's take a quick 30-second commercial break. Indians down 28-7, to and we're here live on WBON-TV. Since opening in 1972, Citizens Guarantee Bank has been there to help our customers enhance their lives and achieve their dreams. With seven locations across Central and Eastern Kentucky today, we are celebrating 50 years of being there for the communities we call home. Citizens Guarantee Bank is now CG Bank. New name, same commitment to being there for our neighbors. CG Bank, we've been there for that. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Back here with 5.53 to play. It is third down and long. Brian Station stops the clock with the timeout. And he's down by three scores, Tom. So got to get this stop here. Brian Station probably going to run the ball, I would think, and just keep the clock going. But they line up in the shotgun. Cut right. Take snap. He's going to throw. Looking. And he'll take off with it. Farmer giving him a chase, and he's chased out of bounds. Did, did get pretty close to a first down. He needed about 21 yards, and he got about 19. It'll be fourth down, and Brian Station might go for this time. If they go for it and pick it up, might be able to just salt this clock away and hold on for the victory. They're backing him up to the 45-yard line, so it'll be fourth and three, but the defenders are going to line up and go for it. Clock stopped as Cutright did run out of bounds. Goes up under center, and he'll hand it off. Monday Lloyd first down, and more for the defender's tailback. Man, that is a backbreaker. If you're a Madison Central fan, as the defenders, and once again, work the clock. 5.38 to play. And that can take about another two minutes off here now, Tom, and just start to uh, work the clock down.
Letting it trickle down all the way to the 510 mark. Here's the handoff, Monday Lloyd. He runs near side, and he'll gain a yard. You know, Tom, uh, that's a great shot of that. Uh, we'll go see if we can get Gage to get it for us again, the young man here in the, in the crowd. You know, listen, even with a good football game on sometimes, it, you still like to have some fun if you're a young kid. We're going to get a shot here of it in just a second. It's 452 to play. It took you. <laughs> this young man's having some fun. Even on a cold Friday night, not a care in the world, just enjoying the toys here, Tom. Yeah, that, that's good. 435 to play. Cut right. Back up under center on a second down and eight. They'll give it to Monday Lloyd near side. And he'll break loose for a first down, spin away, and again, we'll keep the clock churning. Brock Eads and Parker Mullins in on the stop. Check out the replay. Coming right at us, Monday Lloyd. And there's where he gets the first down. Spins away, and that spin kept him in bounds as well as he saw the defender bearing down on him. And 4.13 to play. Clock still ticking here in the fourth quarter. Couple of substitutions on that defensive line now. You're trying to keep them fresh up front. What Brian Station is able to do, Tom, they got a couple of big guys lined up to the left side to help block for Monday Lloyd. They'll run it right behind them. Runs into a defender, but stays upright. Monday Lloyd cutting it back to the near side. Finally brought down, but able to gain about five yards again. So under three and a half to play. Brian Station will not snap this football until it gets below 310. And now Madison Center, I believe, will got a coach's timeout. Injury timeout, injured player down on the field. 321 to play here in the fourth quarter. Appreciate you joining us here, folks. We're live on WBON TV. Don't forget special coverage. Uh, coming up this weekend, the homecoming football game for EKU. Dawson, Roll, and I will be live on WBON TV and on 100.7, the Coyote. 1.30. 1.30 for the tailgate show, Tom. And, you know, I love homecoming. It's a great chance to see some of the folks I went to school with. I loved my time at EKU. And uh, I was you know, somebody was texting me earlier about the line at the Family Dog, it's about an hour wait to even get in to oh, that I, place. Tonight. I imagine. It was so popular back yeah. in the day, and you, you wonder why, uh, you know. But it's it's business. You know, if you're not doing a good business, most of the time you're not going to see a, a place like that stay open. Very well, long. even the building. I think the building was kind of breaking down on them. It's hard to keep something like that going. But uh, it's, it's going tonight. It's popping down there in downtown yeah, Richmond this evening. Yeah. Water Street's a place to be right now. Had the parade earlier tonight. Second down and five for Bryan Station. They'll start the clock, 3.20 to play. And cut right will go up under center. Union showing blitz. Cut right. He's being chased. Breaks loose. Two flags come in, an easy yeah, hole as cut right yeah. runs it in. But the flags will negate another Bryan Station score. The fourth time tonight, and Bryan Station has had points taken off the board because of a penalty, and all four of them have been holds, Tom. Yeah. Well, that was obvious again. You, the, when the defensive player is beyond you, he went by him, and you got to reach out to grab him to try to slow him down and get him away from your ball carrier. Uh, it should be called every time. We've seen a couple that weren't called tonight. Yeah, well, they should have had five touchdowns called back. You know, the, the one run that Cutright had right before the half came to an end in the first half, there was a blatant hold on Malachi Wood as he was chasing down or trying to chase down the Bryan Station quarterback that wasn't called, and he ended up scoring on that play. So there should be five touchdowns called back. But even that, and they still have the lead, 28-7. They've yeah. been a really good team tonight. 3.01 to play. Cut right up under center. Hand off and 
That's Burnett in the game. Hugh Davis texted me. Hugh, if you're watching it, she just sent us some pictures of Campus Rec on uh, EKU's campus back in the day. I better be in some of those. I'm going to be mad at you if I'm not. Oh, I'm sure he puts you in there somewhere. I'm checking them out here. I don't see you, though. Mm -mm -mm. Had a lot of uh, banners hanging up at the rec when I was in school. The Rich City Bangers, Tom. That was our intramural team name. Won a yeah. couple of uh, basketball championships. Here's a handoff, Monday Lord. He's being chased. Breaks a tackle and will have a first down. It's pushed out of bounds, and they're going to keep this clock churning, though. Forward progress. They'll keep it going. 2.09 to play in Bryan Station. Going to pull out a victory here tonight, Tom. But you tell you what, Madison Central played a much better second half. Uh, as to this point, they've played even with the defenders here in the second half. Each team has scored seven points. But that first half just fell, beh fell behind by too many points and uh, could not make their way into a comeback tonight. Did they uh, get a picture of you when you were on the double secret probation that one time? Double secret probation. <laughs> Man, I care. They, it's uh, <laughs> secret stuff. You can't give those, those kind of details out. Minute 45 to play. Don't forget, if you're watching on TV, we've got a uh, couple of episodes of the Forensic Files immediately following our broadcast here tonight. Monday Lloyd going to punch one in, adding to his total and adding to the score for Bryan Station. 28-7. to seven. Touchdown defenders make it now 34-7. to seven. And Bryan Station... Just pouring some salt into the wound now as they make it now a four touchdown lead and the extra point coming up. The big re, uh, homecoming 5K is at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Yeah. And I'm out on that. I saw today that they're having a home run derby on the baseball field at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Extra point is good. 35-7. Indians down. Against Bryan Station, we'll take a one-minute commercial break, folks, and we'll come right back on WBON-TV. Chenault Vineyards has become a premier destination in Richmond for family and friends looking for fun and entertainment. The vineyard sits on 500 acres with breathtaking views and several different things for you to enjoy while you're there. Live music, tastings, tours, a walking trail, or maybe you'd like to host your own event at the vineyard. Visit ChenultVineyards.com to check out the complete list of upcoming events. Like them on Facebook to stay informed or like Chenault Vineyards on Instagram. At Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry, we value our patient relationships, making it our priority to deliver the gentle, compassionate care that you deserve from a dentist. We offer patients single visit restoration on crowns, bridges, inlays, onlays, and veneers with Cirac. Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry is equipped to handle all your dental needs, from implants, teeth whitening, root canal therapy, and more. For your next dental appointment and for more details on lip filler and disport specials, call Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry at 859-985-0. 2 Brian Station kicks it away. Going to be returned on the far side. I think that's Works on the return. And Madison Central time down 35 to 7, a minute 29 to play. The defenders going to be crowned regular season district champs, same thing they were last year and the year before. They've won the district championship in the regular season all three years under their head coach, Coach Hawkins. And you know, talking to him before the game, he is really excited about the way this program and the direction they're heading. Well, you get 41 kids coming out for freshman football. Yeah. You. And they're good athletes. You've got to be excited about something like that. He's got a lot of, a lot of talent coming his way. So, going to see uh, a lot of good things out of this team here over the next many years. Indians getting some of these young guys in. They'll regroup and face Southwestern next week on senior night. As... Elijah Steele has now come into the game at quarterback. He'll hand it off. And a nice carry by Bryant Mathis on first down. 
Tates Creek beat Henry Clay 22 to 19. So what that means is now the Blue Devils will be the opponent of Madison Central in the first round of the playoffs here in a couple of weeks. So that's right around the corner. Duke? No, not Duke, Henry Clay. Oh, the Henry Clay. Yeah, Henry Blue Clay. Devil. Blue oh, okay. I got you. I hear Blue Devils, I think, in Duke. Brian Station going to call a timeout here. Just oh. think they're going to bring some of these seniors off the field and get them a little applause after a nice win. They're going to go, Tom, to 6-3 and three on the year. And all six of those wins coming after an 0-3 start. They have really picked up their play as of late. And they're going to be a tough out in the postseason. Here's the thing. These two teams are almost on a collision course to meet in the postseason again. So the way it would, used to be, they would meet in the district championship game. Now I believe it would be for a region championship yes. because there's eight teams total. Uh, Madison Central will play Henry Clay in the first round. Bryan Station will play Lafayette. Tates Creek will play GRC. And uh, the one seed Dunbar on that side will play Oldham County in the first round. He'll right. be the four seed from our district here. Second down and short. And off Parker Mullins this time. He'll run right side and no gain on the play. Stay tuned. We'll have a quick uh, Chenault Vineyards postgame show for you coming up after the game, and then we'll hand it off to Forensic Files, followed up by a couple episodes of Cheaters if you're watching on the WBON TV cable channel. And, Thomas, is tonight your uh, your Cheaters episode you're going to be on? Is, that the, is tonight your episode, Aaron? No, no, no it won't be on okay. tonight. You know, yeah, it's, it's that time of year. Forensic Files, you know, the, the creepy shows like those yeah. right around Halloween time. It's fun to kind of watch shows like that if you like to be spooked. Yeah, my Cheaters uh, episode was the one where uh, I, w I was playing checkers and my opponent turned his head. and <laughs> you, you, you moved the pawn I'm, or the uh, bishop? I moved, I chess, moved one it? of his players when he wasn't looking. <laughs> Elijah Steele will keep it on the quarterback keeper. Again, about nine yards. Nice run there by Steele. Elijah's been a really good player. Listen, this kid is uh, going to be a really good basketball player this year, too, for Madison Central. Brown Station, 35, Madison Central, 7, regular season district. Cram will go to the defenders for this third straight year as they'll hold on for the victory here tonight. Indians fall on the road. Let's step aside for a two-minute commercial break. We'll come back and wrap things up here in Lexington on the Chinook Vineyards postgame show on WBON-TV. Looking for some fun this fall? The Galaxy Bowling Center has a league for you. No matter your skill level, you can come out, make some new friends, and have a great time. Call 624-4444 for details. Or if you're more of a trivia person, Champions Bar and Grill has you covered every Tuesday starting at 7 with great prizes and all-you-can-eat wings for only $19.99. Why go anywhere else? The Galaxy Bowling Center and Champions Bar and Grill. Your ticket to fun just off I-75, exit 87 in Richmond. It's the common thread that ties us together, making life better for everyone. At CVNB, that means better banking, better accounts and lending, better experiences, better schools and better communities. Better. It's what ties us together. CVNB. Bank better. Need a physical for school or work? Need it right away? No problem! Berea Urgent Care has two convenient locations along with late hours to meet your needs. They're affordable too. Physicals at Berea Urgent Care only $20. DOT and CDL physicals are only $65. Berea Urgent Care number one by Walmart is open every day 9 to 9. Berea Urgent Care number two by Berea Drug open Monday through Friday 10 to 6. No appointment necessary. Berea Urgent Care, here when you need us. Did I ever tell you about that time I zipped right past that dang Sasquatch? 
I don't think so. Yes, sir, I don't know how they ever got away if it wasn't for this brand new side-by-side -side I got at Gateway Circles. In Mount Sterling? Yes, sir, they set me up with something that left old Sasquatch sneezing in my dust. <laughs> Jimbo! Lord, I hear him coming back now. That ain't no Sasquatch. That's Mama. Get a great deal on Sasquatch eluders today. Gateway Cycles, Mount Sterling. Back here on the Chenault Vineyards postgame show, Chenault Vineyards has become the go-to destination for families and friends to enjoy fun and entertainment in a relaxing atmosphere. See why so many people spend their weekends at Chenault Vineyards by visiting ChenaultVineyards.com. Time to forget about that uh, holiday vendor market coming up in late November at Chenault Vineyards. Great place to check out some good uh, local shopping and they'll have some uh, fun events for the kids as well. Check out Chenault Vineyards on Facebook uh, to get more information about that. And uh, you can also, if you are a vendor, if you've got maybe some crafts, you build something, you want to try to sell that at the craft fair, you can also reach out to Chenault Vineyards and let them know uh, that you're interested in doing that. They'll get you set up for that uh, vendor fair coming up in late November. Tom Madison Central, a much better second half for the Indians. You know, as they headed into the locker room at halftime, Central only had, I think it was 62 total yards in that first half. Yes. They finished the game with 244, so a much better, almost 200 yards of offense in the second half, but it was too little, too late. It, just so many plays and so many big moments in the game where they couldn't execute. And that was kind of the downfall for them tonight. Brady Hensley, 88 yards on 21 carries. Jaden West had six catches for 45 yards. Hagan Harrison, a touchdown uh, pass to Parker Mullins. He was 11 of 17 through the air for 113. But it wasn't enough offensively. And how about the big game by Monday Lloyd? Yeah. 214 yards on 33 carries and two touchdowns. And cut right, very efficient, 9 of 16 for 126. And a couple of touchdown passes to J.T. Haskins, Jr tonight. Yeah, Haskins Jr., really impressive. Monday Lloyd, he was impressive uh, on TV just in the interview, yeah. the way he was talking. And then to get out here and be able to see him play tonight, and he's the real deal, folks. You're going to be hearing a whole lot about him before this season's over. Folks, we want to say a special thank you to our game sponsors tonight. Don't forget to reelect Republican Steve Tussey for Madison County Jailer, a native of Madison County who has proven he is a man of integrity and commitment that's paid for by Steve Tussie. Also on November 8th, vote to keep Mike Coyle as your Madison County Sheriff. It's paid for by the candidate as well. And vote to reelect Reagan Taylor as your Madison County Judge Executive to keep building a better Madison County. Paid for by the friends of Reagan Taylor for Judge Executive Myron Fisher, Treasurer. The night's game also brought to you by John Tudor, your magistrate for District 3 in Madison County. Vote to reelect John Tudor as your magistrate on November 8th. It's also paid for by the candidate. Final stats, you know, we had those for you as well, and now it's time to crown our CT Diesel performance, performance of the game. We think Hayden Kaiser tonight had a big game for the Indians. Kaiser uh, had, I think, five and a half tackles there in the first half, had a big sack, and uh, played really well defensively. I think we should give him our uh, CT Diesel performance, performance of the game. Yeah, uh, getting a sack, number one, that's something that's been lacking a little bit by uh, the defense. So, uh, yeah, he, he really did. He he had a really nice defensive game this evening. So Hayden Kaiser, our CT Diesel Performance, performance of the game. If you want your vehicle to perform at its best, take it to CT Diesel Performance, located off exit 97 in Richmond. Chris Dorn and his staff service all vehicles, big or small, like them on Facebook to take part in their monthly giveaways at CT Diesel Performance. Final score, Indians fall 35-7. to A great crew here on hand. And back at the studio with our radio producer, Aiden Mills, our TV producer, Gage Hill. Our cameraman tonight, Jacob Beck and Jericho Puckett and Dawson Rule down on the sidelines for us. For Tom Gross, I'm Michael Watkins. Folks, we'll see you tomorrow on the EKU Tailgate Show. And a special thanks to WL Stats, Glenn Gentry and Brandon Miller providing stats for us tonight. Thank you guys for hooking us up here. And uh, Tom, it's always good when we got those stats and the broadcast adds a lot to it. Thanks to those guys tonight. And uh, thanks to Hugh Davis for letting us hang out to dry this year. I'm still mad at him. Still mad at him. <laughs> yeah. I ain't going to buy his lunch for two more weeks. I'm not getting though after that. Okay. <laughs> Indians fall on the road. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Don't forget Forensic Files on the TV channel right here on WBON-TV.